Genahan muat be b, tolokan be j, pakai tapus tolokan belem. Kemudian yang tolokan belem, nubut batu, tolokan mini kemok ni kemok tahu tapus. Kemudian yang makam hulung, ini gua nubut ni bayu teme, buat ba amfan, amfan nubut mok duni teme. Nah himo ni lulu sanguna na kung nai alma nai balut selik dina dina kopi nak cawak. Maayong hapon sa tanan, Pamgrass de Cebu Heritage Hotel in partnership with the Central Visayas Association of Museums, SOAN 2020, Art Cebu, and Bagong Chatro Hongkera present to you this exciting event this afternoon, a coffee talk with Professor J. Nathan Hori to discuss about Nindot, the pre-colonial aesthetics. Maayong hapon once again, maayong hapon sa tanan. Welcome to those who are here on site and also to those who are with us online. Thank you very much for being with us once again. So um, we have been talking with the resource person, our kakape this afternoon that we wanted to have this event um, last in the last week of May so that it would be uh, within the National Heritage Month celebration. But of course, at Pangras, every day is a heritage day. 
So we always celebrate every day. We celebrate heritage. So this afternoon, our topic in our coffee talk, the last time we had a, a talk over coffee was with um, Canadian uh, Cebuano, Sobi Wing uh, of the Visayas culture, Canada. She, he is Canada based and also uh, having this organization advocating for Visayan culture. So, and that was the last time that we had the coffee talk, and that was um, in February. Was it February <laughs> or January? <laughs> I forgot. So, and also, we had also a coffee talk last year in September with the National Artist um, for Literature, uh, Dr. Risil, National Artist for Literature and Historian, Dr. Risil Muhares. So, this time, this is our third time to have a coffee talk. It's just a talk over coffee, but with visual aids. And, and also, uh, we only have one uh, person, resource person with us to, to give us, uh, uh, to have conversations with us regarding exciting uh, topics in our heritage and in our history. So right now, our topic is on pre-colonial aesthetics. What is Nindot? What is beautiful? for our ancestors in, when before the Spaniards came. So right now, we always hear the word aesthetic. And there was a time when we had this uh, video uh, production. We, had a, we wanted to create a video last year regarding um, Lumay, Hello Love Lumay. And we were, so I was the only one who was not a Gen Z in the, in the team. So, so I was asking them, what should the, the performer or the actor or actress wear? And they said, aesthetic, mom, aesthetic. Someone like aesthetic. <laughs> so Google aesthetic. <laughs> so when we Googled aesthetic, so we saw that it is what uh, the influencers wear. So right now we are going to discuss, we are going to converse about the aesthetics in pre-colonial times. So if... Right now, kisana mga Zainab, you said that unsa to when we had a discussion in the in the the Gen Z and Millennial team, they said that the the young person, the the actor or the actress should wear clothes with a design of aesthetics, aesthetic design of clothes. So that's the modern aesthetics. So we saw kisana silang mga influencers who wear aesthetic. Zainab, Zainab, usana, Zainab, <laughs> and then who else is pa? Huh? Kamu ko na historia alam bisi kimi. You you tell me. Sige, see we have our our model of indigenous aesthetic. Ikaw ko na tell me, CJ, who who are those influencers who wear aesthetics? Pwede siya mas show. Sige, dito sa microphone. Tell us who wear. The, the the aesthetics design right now. They they wear uh, aesthetic design. So on some aesthetic design. I wala madungge. There there was no sound. So wala I sound the eye. So, it, it, pa, parang ko na ang camera, like, there is a front niya. So, um, so, who are those influencers who wear aesthetic design? Uh, Zainab Harake, Donalyn Bartolome, and Tony Fowler. Then, ang aesthetic sa generation na mo karon ma'am, kay mura na siya o ka nang sa, sa una nga, nga time, then, gi-apply karon sa new generation nga, ilang gihimong fashion karon para murag i-showcase nila sa i-showcase karon nga time kung unsay mga fashion sa una so mo na siya gitawag nga aesthetics means nga kanang murag karaan na gani pero nabalik karon og so, kanang fashion if, sa if, mga new generation uh, thank you CJ uh -huh. so it means it's a, a, an old design that you are reviving so yes, if it's an old design what year na nga old uh, sa panahon na mo karon ma'am kay kasagaran sa mga gisunod na mo nga fashion kay mga nasa late 90s mga uh, late 2000s. 90s. Mm. Daghang salamat si Jay. So we are very ancient and archaic because for them old people are those in the 90s. <laughs> so when were you born? 1970s, 80s. 
1950s. So those who are very dinosaur age. <laughs> so, so for the young people right now, the aesthetic design that they follow are those designed from the 90s. So right now, we are going to, this, to, have, uh, to have conversations about the aesthetics 500 or 600 years ago. <laughs> so, so more than the 90s. So this is, this, this, this is we are going to have a, a, this, a conversation with uh, our resource person on aesthetics long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> during the age of the dinosaurs <laughs> so thank you very much to those um, online so we have maria uh, rodora agustin from uh, from san mateo uh, rizal so uh, watching us from the national quincentennial committee page and we have also we also have um we have uh we have ferdinand uh, apartisio uh from um, Tagig City and Pateros, and we have Papel Diliha, a heritage advocate, maayo og nindot ng hapun sa tanan, and also uh, Helen Soriano um, from uh, GRPMHS Annex. So, daghan salamat for joining us, and we also have right now uh, on site our tour guides from C the Cebu Association of Tour Guides, and we also have our um from flag tour guides thank you very much for joining us and we have also our uh, guests from the the indigenous people's community what man mga costume si ko and pwede pwede mas ibalhin ang camera dire sa audience so so we have uh we have our also our heritage advocate and the creator of my the replica of Patanao earrings and Kamagi, the ancient ancient um, necklace of the Visayans. So <laughs> Ferdinand Ascaraga, show lot of si Ferdinand. Oh, wala, di wak klaro, di wak klaro. Oh, so daghan ka ayon one million ang audience karon. <laughs> so daghan ka ayon kasi. 500,000 na manidaan si Ferdinand. So, uh, we would also be showing his aesthetics later on. Thank you very much for joining us. And we have also Piper Abbas, um, our resource person a few months ago or last year regarding tattoos. So, of course, uh, he is a tattoo artist, an indigenous tattoo artist. So, um, he is the designer of the tattoo that uh, Ferdinand is wearing right now. So <laughs> we would see the creation and the creator. <laughs> and so, so uh, thank you very much to our, um, our partners in this event, the Central Visayas Association of Museums, SOAN 2020, Art Cebu, and Bagong Chatro Honkera. And also, this is also being broadcast at the National Centennial Committee page. So, uh, Thank you to Rodora Reyes already, both in, uh, uh, Rodora Reyes is here in online and on site. So from the tour guides of, of flag, flag tour guide. So thank you also to our, um, our participants on site who registered on, on, I mean, online. We have our um, tour guides, I mean, we have our participants who registered, who came, who come from these institutions. There's someone who comes from the PUP, Polit Poly Polytechnic University of the Philippines, from Letran, Calamba. And we also have from um, the University of San Carlos, we have someone from St. Teresa's College. We have from uh, someone online uh, watching us from Cebu Normal University. We have also from Cebu Association of Tour Guides. We have someone from the Department of Education, from the University of the Philippines, Visayas. We have someone from the University of Cebu, Lapu-Lapu, and Mandawe. We have someone from Alampat 2022. And also, uh, Fashion Institute of the Philippines. Is this uh, Frenchy? This is Francis Duane. Uh, oh, Fra uh, Francis Duane, our 
fashion designer, indigenous fashion, uh, in, in, designer of indigenous fashion. So we wanted to 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 have to have you here and show your fashion. <laughs> and we also have someone from Ateneo de Davao University and from Kalinan National High School. Dagang salamat everyone for joining us. So for those who are on online, please uh, write the hashtag Nindot or hashtag pre-colonial aesthetics and then please tell us where you are in the Philippines or in the world right now. And if you have questions or comments, we invite you to, to uh, write it at the comment section as because you would be reading this as we go along. And um, Daniel Nino Paklihan says, uh, Maayong hapon, Pam Grass. Good to see you. And sorry, I'm delayed. Oh, you're just okay. You're just on time. Uh, of course, our on time is before the time. <laughs> the, the Filipino time is on time. And on time is before the time. <laughs> So, so we have um, uh, Maria Helen Sorian, uh, Soriano Mar Martiris. Good afternoon. Uh, we have read this already. So thank you very much for, for joining us. And so we invite you to share this. Um, to sh we invite you to share this uh, Facebook Live event so that your friends would also uh, watch and know about the pre-colonial uh, aesthetic. And also, um, so that more could interact uh, right now. So, we we would like to to you to know that uh, this month is also a month of celebrations. We are we are celebrating this June the 125th year of the independence of the Philippines from Spanish colonial rule, and also um, this uh, June 19 we would be celebrating the 160, 162nd birthday of Dr. Jose Rizal, of hero Dr. Jose Rizal. And that's why we would be having a, a, an event, a heritage event on December, I mean, on June, 17, it's June 17. We will have um, uh, a con I mean, conversations with, Two professors, um, historian Xiao Chua, and the topic is um, Rizal loves Cebu. So it's the connection of Rizal with Cebu. And because Jose Rizal, Jose Rizal had a student who came from Cebu, a Cebuano student, in the, well, he was in the Pitan. So we also have a resource person on that, on that day, eight. A professor at the at the Jose Rizal Memorial University in the Pitan, uh, Professor Rex Hamoy, and he is also a descendant of a student of Rizal, and he has studied so much about the history of the Pitan and what Rizal did in the Pitan. So stay tuned for that uh, event in June. So so. So June is also the Pride Month. So we are celebrating this month the LGBTQIA and we a plus. So we we honor them, we celebrate the Pride Month by honoring them and respecting uh, their rights to love and be loved. So choose whom to love. Yes. And <laughs> and also um did you know that on also on the birthday of Dr. Sarizal, the, it was on that day that um, uh, Don Gregorio Abellana, he mentioned in his article and published book that it was also the day that the first chapter of the Katipunan was formed in, in San Nicolas. So on the same day as the birthday, but in 18... 1897. So that's a year before the Battle of Tres de Abril. So, di na tawaglangan. So, di na tawaglangan. Okay. Okay, um, we would now like to, to um, we would now like to, um, to introduce to you our resource person, our kakape. What's the term? Gamiton alang. Someone you have coffee with in Bisaya. 
Kamarites, <laughs> Kachismisan, Kachika. <laughs> so uh, good afternoon also to Juliet, Julieta Gonzalez Buis from Tagig City and Patera. So these are teachers and supervisors from Tagig City and Patera who so are with us always in our events uh, every month and um, who also lo love our Cebu Wano heroes and all the rest of the heroes in our country. And also we have Meraluna Hortelano watching from Mandawi City, a proud member of Katji, of the Cebu Association of Tour Guides. Thank you for joining us, Meraluna. So right now we have with us, uh, we are very excited because he is with us once again on, on site, in person. So we usually had him online in the past aside except that time when he was a judge in a in a contest in a poster making contest and i remember that when we had him as a resource person in fashion lao ai oh, lao ai lao Shu. and then one of my one of the audience my coach in the gym was saying he does not usually watch the 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 events but when he was watching lao ai it's a very exciting topic. Lao Ai, Lao Lai Shu, nudity and fashion in pre-colonial Visayas. And he was telling me that he had goosebumps listening to the resource persons, especially to Professor Jay Hore. Ahong Juan, ahong, 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 Proud kay siya nga, iya kong gipaniwang o 13 kilos. At, the, at our gym upstairs at ako ano, <laughs> at, at Hardin Dagami Roof Deck Bar, we have a gym. So you can also avail of that plugging sa ako sa gym. So, so he had goosebumps listening to Professor Jay. So anyway, gawas nga, good looking, thought provoking ang tanang story. Ah. <laughs> so in this afternoon, it is a hot afternoon with coffee, but uh, we will have um, a, a resource person who, who is an assistant professor of the of, uh, at the Department of Fine Arts at the University of the Philippines, Cebu. He's teaching art history, theory and criticism, art management and product design courses. He has been the curator and director of the Jose Sihoya Gallery in UP Cebu since 2018, and um, he is the coordinator of the Office for Initiatives in Culture and the Arts of UP Cebu, and uh, he finished his fine arts undergraduate degree at the University of San Carlos in Cebu City, and he had his master's in, in art studies, art theory, and criticism from the University of the Philippines de Liman with a thesis on the life and times of Cebuano muralist Raymond, Raimondo Francia and his ceiling paintings in the heritage churches of Cebu and Bohol. And his interest includes Cebuano art and, uh, and design history and contemporary art and design practices in Cebu. And um, under his direction, he launched the University of the Philippines Cebu Museum of Art and Culture which aims to preserve and promote the rich traditions of Cebu and its neighboring islands. So right now, we would like to introduce to you, it's, it's our pleasure to introduce to you our Kamarites this afternoon, uh, Professor J. Nathan Hore. Okay, mayong hapon, Miss. Mayong hapon, Ari Tamutanao. Uh. Okay, mayong hapon po sa tanan natong mga kauban din ngayon karong hapon diri sa Hall nga. Tawanan, trust the avail. Okay, dos. Okay. Salamat kayo sa pag It's very nice to be back and to be in conversation with you. And you, ang imong energy di yun na matupngan, no? <laughs> Always di maluya. <laughs> but uh, I'm very happy to be sharing this space with you this afternoon and to uh, talk about important uh, facet of Cebuano culture. These things that we often not uh, discuss in school because of the lack of materials regarding these kinds of uh, topics 
and it's I'm very happy that Pomegranate is able to provide a platform for us to be able to talk about these kinds uh, of uh, topic important to Cebuano culture. Dahil salamat uh, for the beautiful words, uh, Professor Jay Mabuhi, gid atong dugo ato. It's a very uh, mo init atong hapon because of your of your inspiring words. So um, asa na to atong technical team for the camera and also um, so uh, so. So right now we have um, we have our Kapiha uh, Nilumaya serving us coffee because it's a coffee talk. So our Kapiha Nilumaya server would can may we show our Kapiha Nilumaya server? Uh, so we have our <laughs> Kapiha Nilumaya server. Um, so we have our Kapiha Nilumaya server. Um, so our Kapiha ni Lumaya, so you would see them, our servers dressed in black, uh, black white uh, and clothing with gold trim. Because, of course, this is when, when, uh, when the wife of Rahu Mabun was baptized in 1521, she was described to be wearing black and white clothing. So it always means something. Everything here at Palm Grass has a meaning related to our heritage and our history. So, because in 1521, Pegafeta and Magellan saw rice cakes, we are now serving coffee. Pero kaning si Kwati, di 1521. So, we have si Kwati and uh, uh, Putumaya for, for Professor Jay Hore. It show for us Professor Jay. <laughs> Yes. So we have, uh, so we did us serve. Yes, please serve. So, server. <laughs> so, so this is, so we have uh, coffee. So our uh, native uh, tablia chocolate uh, with also our. Putumaya ug manga. Muscovado sugar. With muscovado sugar. Dagang salamat to, to Joy, our server from Kapihan Lumaya. And she would also be serving me. She is also serving me. Our, so we own, we serve here. So I, I was so surprised because Kapima is, so we are serving this since 20, since we had our soft opening. Kapima is, no sugar. Oh, lami ni ang kape mais. Asa naman? Oh, lami ni siya. I was so surprised that five-star hotels in Cebu, there's a five-star hotel in Cebu that is now serving kape mais. Also, like palm grass. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, we have also, we have also uh, at palm grass, uh, kapiha ni Lumaya, another type of rice cake, which is uh, giko. So, the kuwaan niya biko ay hinahanglan tilawan niya rato niya biko so biko and putumaya are served every day at kapihan ni lumaya lumia sa biko ni joy thank you very much for the biko and tapi maes so thank you very much to to Rappler, Ryan, Gahudu, Makasero for watching. Professor Jay, your friend, is here. Kamarites nato this afternoon. So, gisud ka ayo mag sorry mag kaonda ay no. Tinuod gid nang gisulti sa mga tigulang. Dili mag storya, dili mo kaon kung mag storya. So I said that the elderly usually tell us you don't talk while your mouth is full. You cannot talk if you are eating. So. Kamula mga ondin haon niya sa audience on site. So now we would like to ask uh, Professor Jay. So so right now we are now starting our coffee conversations with uh, Professor Jay. So Professor Jay, you would like to know. So we, you have been our resource person for twice on sculptures in pre-colonial sculpture and also in the nudity and fashion in pre-colonial Visayas. So we would like to know. Um, how are we able to, to get a picture of the arts 
uh, in our archipelago during the pre-colonial times. Okay. Uh, one very important impetus to the study of pre-colonial culture of the Philippines is the recently concluded quincentennial celebration and how the government was able to shift it towards a, a very uh, inward looking to Filipino culture because it was supposedly a, a huge celebration. If we remember it when we started to prepare, CBCP was started to uh, was starting to prepare for the 500 years of the arrival of the Christian faith in the islands. And it was supposed to be that kind of celebration, but uh, we all know in the cultural community that the president at that time, Rodrigo Duterte, wanted to focus instead on the how the natives uh, supposedly uh, welcomed the arrival of the colonizers, in particular Magellan, and wanted to highlight that there was already an existing Filipino culture or in uh, pre-colonial culture, high culture that needs to be rediscovered and needs to be discussed. And uh, the series of activities that can, the Quincentennial Celebration allowed us to uh, take a glimpse into this very rich and often forgotten part of our history. And I think uh, because of the Quincentennial, we're able to discuss almost all of the facet of pre-colonial culture. And we thank uh, the government for that, and especially Pamgras, who really had wonderful lineup of events and uh, activities to highlight this very important uh, uh, part of Filipino culture and pre -colonial. And that's the very reason we were, we were you were able to invite us and many of the other uh, academics here in Cebu and abroad. But uh, we all know that even before the celebration of the Quincentennial, we are able to, uh, there are already publications and uh, mga importante lang na nga uh, pwede mabasa uh, on our own kay wala pa ka siya na suit yun sa curriculum sa uh, ato ang uh, eskwela, ang kaning first voyage around the world by Antonio Pigafetta that uh, substantially talked about uh, his experience the days he was here in Cebu and his interaction with the locals. And then the Boxer Codex that provided us the wonderful uh, watercolor illustrations of the, the, the Cebuanos, the Tagalogs, and uh, the first document of uh, visual documentation of the natives uh, here in the islands, and that's the Boxer Codex. And then the history of the Visayan people by Padre Alcina is my favorite reading. If you really want to know more about the Bisaya, uh, uh, Padre Alcina is very uh, kind of generous in his depiction, uh, de description of the Visayans. And that uh, came from a very uh, personal encounter with the, the Visayans whom he served for a long, long time. So it's a wonderful reading, History of the Visayan People. And then, of course, uh, our favorite, William Henry Scott, who was able to really gather and study the writings of the friars that describe pre-colonial culture and its remnants towards and during the time of the Spanish colonial period and that he was able to record in a very important book called The Barangay. I think na may balikya mga barangay, ma'am, no? Yes, you have to reserve your copy. <laughs> and then uh, a good thing about uh, the internet now, the compilation of all the archival materials gathered by Blair and Robertson can now be accessed online through... Uh, open access uh, libraries. So it's also a very good resource to study pre colonial culture uh, through that compilation of voluminous research compiling all writings about Philippine culture uh, during the early, uh, during the entire Spanish colonial period in the Philippines.
And of course, uh, our ongoing projects, your ongoing project, your visits to the different uh, communities, indigenous communities in Mindanao, you're able to bring all of these textiles. And then uh, uh, the, our academic communities doing a lot of field work uh, amongst uh, indigenous communities that can make us, give us that kind of trace or remnant of what could have been uh, Filipino culture, if not uh, with the influence and the dynamics of uh, colonialism. So, thank uh, you Pro Professor Jay. So, um, so uh, Professor Jay mentioned uh, lots of materials from Win William Henry Scott, um, from Father Francisco Alsina, and um, we have also we would like you to know nga, even if we don't have Alsina, we can read it at, at of course, it is, um, it is available, uh, the book by Alsina, and also by William Henry Scott. And even uh, this one, this one in, in the Feast of the Santo Nino by Dr. Isil Mujeres, he is able to describe what um, the Spaniards saw in Cebu or in the Visayas when they arrived here. Uh, 500, 502 years ago and also even here in there there's also a description here by Dr. Isil Mujeres in the introduction to Lapu Lapu and also if you would like to know about Visayan arts I had a crash course about this last night because the curator of the Cagayan de Oro Museum who, who used also to be one of our resource person JC um, Salon was was sending me a message and asking me, please, uh, uh, do you know what is the Bisaya word for art? I said, it's our topic tomorrow. <laughs> I said, wait, uh, I am going to get our last copy of the history of, I mean, the dictionary of the Bisayan arts. So I was, I, I, then before that, I was asking him, which art form do you mean? Because there are different art forms like literature, music, dance, drama, film, uh, architecture, visual arts. And then he said, drama. <laughs> drama. No. And then I told him, you know, Dr. Rizil So I had to get this and look at this from, uh, this is a compilation of Dr. Elinda Alguro of all the words in the Visayas related to arts from pre-colonial times until the modern time. So this is a very good uh, reference for looking for words on the related to the to the arts. So anyway, I told uh, I told uh, JC that regarding theater or dance, Doctor Isil Mujeres in his introduction to the book Subuanon Sub Cebuano uh, Theater. So uh, he mentioned that the first Recorded Theater in society, society in theater. It's a uh, it's a translation of some Cebuano plays uh, into English and Tagalog. So from Cebuano. So so it was uh, there was an introduction by Dr. Rizal Mujeres, and Dr. Rizal Mujeres mentioned in his introduction that the first performance with theater elements was recorded by Pigafetta. It was the Babylon dance. So, um, Dr. Rizil Mujeres referred to the Babylon ritual as a performance. It's a performance art. It's a performance art with theater elements. So, of course, there's music, there's dance, and of course, there's acting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> completo, completo. Completo. And costume, of yes, course. Yes, yes, yes. And they're, they're, they have costume. So, it's, uh, it's like theater and the performance. So, so that's why we, I had a hard time looking for the word. So later, I checked the uh, so Bidisaya, another Bidisaya dictionary, and I saw the word Tadiyandi. I, 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 it's not specific to drama, but I told uh, JC, Diyandi the, the is, it, I, I, I screenshot <laughs> the entry for Diyandi, and it's art. So Diyandi is something like to... To make something beautiful and the Andy is art so to the Diandi heritage center which is our also our uh, partner in this and 
uh, Congress is also part of the Yandi Heritage Center. So the Yandi really means art. So art heritage day in the Yandi Heritage Center. So, so, so there are so many books and uh, it is also available here at Congress, the Cebu Heritage Hotel that tell us about these um, arts in pre-colonia, what, what the, the, the Europeans saw when they came to our islands uh, 500 years ago. So now we would like to ask uh, Professor Jay regarding uh, these, what were the art forms? So if you say art, so what were the art? We have gisugda na day na no? When I said art forms and I, when I explained what um, Jay C asked, so we would like to know what are the art forms in our islands in pre-colonial times and what were their functions? I think it's important lang very briefly to look into the terms that we use because art really is a Western term that, uh, that we can completely approximate or we can only approximate in the local sense. Uh, especially in the tradition of how art developed as a discipline. Uh, art for art's sake, we create something so that it can be appreciated. Uh, we produce, an artist produces an artwork out of his expression and then be appreciated as a piece of art. Whereas in the pre-colonial times, what we can really uh, see is that uh, the development of the artistic practice is very much different from how the West and uh, Western art history was developed. And because our concept of creativity and artistry is very much enmeshed with functionality. Uh, we don't create, our ancestors uh, did not create something just for the mere, for the sheer pleasure of doing something beautiful but to make something as, as functional as it is beautiful. So, and that in the West, art is very much attached to another allied practice in design, which is the architecture. So art and architecture, you know. And then, nga magsugod na to ug sabot na ang Cebu, wala yun tay grand architectural structures that needs uh, the need for decoration. So, ang ato ang space, ang atong balay, mo permit man ang atong domestic space o ang, ang environment, ang nature, ang public space, usara siya. So, mauna ang atong bahay kubo, ablike siya, atong mga windows, uh, mura na siya picture frame nga nag-zoom or nag-frame sa landscape sa gawas. Ang Western architecture mangud because of its material mga bugat nagko sila uh, siminto uh, kanang bato it needs to be decorated and so the practice of painting the walls of buildings and structures has uh, was developed and sa uh, atua wala na ang pinaka importante nga asset according to Russell Mohares uh, that a dato should possess is not architectural or mansions and castles but human beings warriors ang tao mo ay pinaka importante nga uh, asset sa usa ka leader and that could give us a glimpse of wa how the artistic expressions of our ancestors developed it was not intended to be seen outside of the human body it is a uh, humanist it is uh, uh, what I call the uh, pre-colonial decorative humanism. Uh, kay ang, ang Western art na si tendency to depict or to uh, tell a story in contrast to decoration. So sa imong sa art criticism ubos ang pagtanaw especially with modern the development of modern art ubos ang pagtanaw niya sa decorative art compared niya to fine art na painting sculpture and decorative art could be artisan or craft nga practice and so ang atong pre-colonial art 
attribute is centered around the human body being the, cel the most celebrated asset of any given uh, society. And so, makita na to nga gi ang atong concept of aesthetics, beauty, dili ni mo makita sa gawasa lawas. Makita ni mo giunsa pag manipulate. Kaya ang Western artist mo, manipulate man siya material, paint, pigment, ang pre-colonial artist iyang gimanipulate ang lawas mismo. Ang kaning practice karon nga modern uh, practice nga performance art, uh, dugay na gyud kay na nga gi, gi practice sa atong pre-colonial forebears. Unsa may gibuhat sa ato ang uh, pre-colonial ancestors? Ilang una, ilang gi-refine ang ilang ngipon. And the called a uh, pusad uh, nakita mo tayong mga examples na in the museums. Have, uh, can you show the the graphics of fun? Yes. Okay na. Okay na na. Na nakuan ang ano siya tawag ani? Ang visuals na na na, na unlink you know? <laughs> <laughs> na sagul. But uh, anyhow, so uh, decorative dentistry usa na siya kay bauta ana niya nga gani gigamit ang pagdecorate sa ba, ba sa ngipon nga uh, as a source of pride for the pre-colonial people kay ilang mang katawan ang pag-abot sa mga Kastila ilang katawan ang mga Kastila kay white gold ang ilang ipon kay ngano man ang ang animal Ang baboy, baka, kanding, maoray, walay, gold, ilang ipon. So they consider those who don't able to put or intervene, the uh, put, design their teeth with gold as animalistic. So mga tawa sila. And then, of course, ang tattoo. Familiar man tang tanan sa tattoo na gi-practice gani ang atong neighboring uh, province sa uh, Leyte lang itawag sa mga tawag pintados but ang ato adari batok ang tawag ana niya but the, the Visayans were uh, uh, war tattoo di na siguro na ko ni elaborate no murag kapila na man nagiskot ang tattoo but <laughs> na ana magsugod sa lapalapa musaka sa hawak and then mag sa breast buko-buko ang pinaka final nga iyahang uh, uh, kanang mura man gani badge of honor iba man ta no ang naong na mauto nga pag-abot ni ni, ni Picafeta yang pagimamat niya kang uh, when he was able to meet the the uh, datu uh, there was a decoration on the face which meant that the leader of Cebu was a brave uh, warrior and so it's na, a fire tattoo Yes. And ang um, what kayo na to, we, we always uh, don't talk about is the practice of skull molding among our pre-colonial ancestors. So what they do, they bind the head with a piece of wood and then to make it uh, elongated at the back. And then mura siya dangas o agtang ba? Flat. Flat. Dangas mo taas siya. Which also would uh, make it more beautiful. Nganong, nganong ilaman tong ako ginang giyo na ako na, nganong ilaman giyo i-flat ang ilang agtang because they have a way of doing their hair. Kay ang o, maduha man ka o, kabula. Lingin ng o, lingin ang buhok. Kay how they, how they do their hair, the women, they bind their hair, very, very long hair, musaguyod sa yuta. They bind their hair into rosettes or balls of hair. And then you would, if you read uh, Alcina, you would know that our uh, lolas and lolos pre-colonial, they already wore extension, hair extensions to even make their hair bigger or the bun of hair bigger. So that elongated forehead, flat elongated forehead, accentuated by that rosette of a hair at the back, could really give you the kind of uh, beauty that our pre-colonial women uh, exude. And plus, 
we know that they were always wore jewelry, and we are happy to see an example of that uh, done this by show, my God. Uh, our uh, Bagoong Tigbuhat. Say, panganin, <laughs> the yun, replica sir. maker. Yes, yes, yes. Jewelry. Oh, yes. Pwede show ko ako goan. And then if you were able to visit Ayala Museum, and you will be able to see uh, different designs of jewelry. What you can see actually uh, in the jewelry and in most of the works that they produce, these are individualized work. Wala you mass production. And these are signature pieces, and I will talk about this later. You know, they wore earrings, they wore, uh, they do their hair, and then, of course, their clothing. Uh, we know that women, as early as two years old, a girl would, would already be trained to help the mother in the weaving of the, tech, uh, of the textile, of the uh, material to be used into clothing. Muna siya ang difference when naabot ang Espanyol. Nga naid usan ng komentaryo, nga sa una, nga narecord sa Osaka Friar, when the women produce their own textiles and make their, them into their own clothes, the quality of work is very, very high. Okay, so ilaman, kibaw man sila nga isulub nila, isulub silang anak, ilang ipasulub silang bana. So the women creating these textiles were did it uh, very in high quality uh, means. Whereas when it was mass produced already, uh, during the piña, the, the other textiles produced during the Spanish period, it was less of a quality. And then, uh, I would not discuss anymore, but we know that uh, the men wore, sis, ato ipakita si sir, the men. Uh, may we show our yes. example of pre-colonial aesthetic? <laughs> uh, we tend to, th to, th to think that our men, pre-colonial men, maghubo mag ragin sila, magbahag. But there is a line, a collection of vesture that men and women wear according to uh, the ritual or according to the event. And, of course, according to the place in society of that individual wearer. If you are the Datu and the royalty, you could wear extravagant pieces of clothing uh, and uh, cho uh, of uh, high quality textiles and you can wear more of the gold we did not explain see we can ask yeah, yeah. Uh, ferdinand yeah. to explain his his uh, accessories and his uh, clothing his pre-colonial aesthetics So we have uh, Ferdinand Ascaraga, who is uh, our uh, heritage advocate. Hello. He is also from uh, Cebu and Actors, and he is um, he is the maker of this uh, my pre-colonial patanaw replica, patanaw earrings replica, and also even my kamagi necklace, gold necklace of pre-colonial times. So we have. Uh, so, ikaw ko lang explain usa na imong gisul of Ferdinand. Ah, uh, maying hapon sa tanan. Um, karon um I am wearing a brag more or less this could have been um an example of how a Visayan chieftain would look like with a pudong. Um, they will wear a red colored pudong. Um, it will signify their status um in the pre-colonial times. Um belonging to the Kadatuan class or someone who had killed an enemy, then with my tattoo, um, this is a representation of a chest tattoo or a patik. And I also have um, a real patik here on my on my leg. So this is the, the labid as what Alcina explained in his um, mga, itong iyang mga writings. Um, it's a it's a line, a zigzag line um, climbing up from the ankle. Um, it is basically, um, it symbolizes um, a wake of a ship, kanang mga lines nga 
naging murag mga balud nga mabilin when a ship crosses the the bodies of water. Na yun, um one of the most exciting things sa uh, pre-colonial nga it's really a celebrated for me personally are the jewelry um we have the the earring the penanular earring or they call this the panika um it is also used for barter or the barter rings then the the kamagi the chain um these are gear beads nga very minute interlocking gear beads nga um i have a few of these sa uh, balay wala lang akong gidala kay kuyo kayo mo tumuwala niya <laughs> then the uh, kaning ingani ga i try to recreate the the finials um this could have been um used to border mga beads then with the bangles with the bead nga uh, ornaments i unfortunately i forgot to bring the one katong mga wrist wraps then the weapons as well um murag dili good makomplete ang regalia without the weapon murag when they parade nagway weapon jewelry clothing and everything and with the hair uh, dapat taas gud ang hair kay it is also um uh, it's a symbolic pod sa murag i think it's rooted in the astronesian culture nga they should also they should always have a long hair or murag i think it's a universal concept nga just like the samson and delaila samson will have a long hair nga murag it's a symbol of strength symbol of power then isa pa diya mga long haired nga mga character so marto siya thank you Thank you for Ferdinand for showing us your pre-colonial aesthetic, sample of pre-colonial aesthetic. So, of course, we also have, they would be showing their also our our interns here at Palmgrass from Talisay City College would also be showing our indigenous aesthetics later. So, so um, of course, we have the bladed weapon. I guess uh, si, si Raven could show um he is our warrior dagami so our war our dagami servers war warrior dagami the chief of gabi who who led the dagami revolt in 1565 so we we named our roof deck bar in in his honor so we have our warrior dagami as our server raven in a uh, also with a tattoo what is the pattern of this tattoo <laughs> so, what were the patterns, Gani? What were the common patterns of CJ? Si uh, Professor J, si ikaw na lang gusto ya. What were the common patterns of the tattoo in pre-colonial times? Kana, kay kisa naghimuan ang tattoo. Who did that, CJ? As si Iris, so our food and beverage supervisor in in Kapihan ni Lumaya made that design. And that is a current, it's a 90s aesthetics design 1990 that was iris no see iris was born in 1990 so that tattoo is 1990 aesthetics <laughs> so what were the usual patterns of the tattoo it was it were originally like the the uh bon venomous serpent that uh from the forests snakes lizards crocodiles to assume that magical power of that uh, at, uh, associated with these uh, animals. And then, gani ang ilang sungugon ang way tattoo as how? Halo. Halo. Kay dako how? siya. So kay English, it, is, ana? it is from the forest. Nga, dako siya, pero ya ya siya, timid siya, dili siya. It can't kill. Uh, but not as uh, ferocious as the uh, crocodile, uh, the snakes. So the, the, so the common tattoos are those with the pattern of the snake and the crocodile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So so they think so of course the art, the body art, and those they wear, they it has also a function, right? It's not just a decoration. Actually, oh it is like a military insignia. So if you munang na asilay kuan nga bago kang itato na asilay term nga mo mo nakalimot ko sa word nga mugawas sa balay niya maghubo lang yun siya 
niya mag chest out niya maglakaw-lakaw nga o oh. para mapakita ang oh. ang iyahang murag public display ba i-display niya ang iyahang uh, high uh, hard earned tattoo yes. so mauto kung maabot na sa aping and chin and, and cheeks that means nga level na ka sa you tattoo. have killed so many so many enemies already you're so powerful so it's actually they have a tattoo whenever they kill an enemy and there is a sto indigenous story wherein the tattoo actually musig igamatay nimo and your journey towards the afterlife musiga siya na tunnel nga ngitngit nya mura siya musiga mugga ya minana mura na asli belief it's uh from sulad when you die you go to sulad and then you need to journey to saad so for you to journey to saad so it, uh si professor j says you have a tattoo and aside from that you need to have gold you cannot journey so maybe the gold would aid the tattoo to glow and then you would be in a boat you would be in a boat going to to saad or paradise so you cannot go to paradise you cannot be you cannot you cannot go to heaven kung sa karon na to today's terms in christian terms you cannot go to heaven without gold ang kana siya with the gold is uh, atong i, i relate sa gold actually mo wear sila gold na agi na siya purpose ang if ang naung sa babay or sa laki magdaghan kay siya arius diri magbitay until mo abot siya diri and then ang 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 explanation na nila sa katong mga friars kay high noon init ba kay ta diri tropical ba ta ang gold mo frame siya sa naung Di ang kani siya ang motong naista, murag na siya og ko ano, iglihok ana niya murag sa tubig bitaw, iglihok ana niya musiga ang naong mo glow sa, na oh, ka. Mo glow. Na ka nang hapon, watubang ka sa afternoon sun, uh, going sunset, ang adlaw mo musiga mo reflect sa layo pa ka magsiga ka. So na ang Raina, the the wife of the dato should wear all the gold ng iyang face mag shimmer shimmer. Ana, shimmering, yes. For you to glow, wear the patanaw earrings and the kamagi necklace of our pre-colonial. Kuwang pa ng imo. So, kuwang pa. Oh, but ang imo. Kinanglan pa. Butangan pa nato o nose ko, an? Nose ring. So, aside from that, these are not just decors, but also amulets. So, yes. So, double na siya. Oh, okay. If they believe that, then they wear this. For example, the bells. We did not to show si Kuan atong bell. Si, see, we have also CJ in in her indigenous aesthetics beadwork of the Higaunon, and also from the Tibuli, they have bells. They have bells in their necklace, in their bracelets. So I am wearing also a Tibuli bracelet. Wala kay bracelet diha. Wala. And then also even the bells. Asan ba di mo bells? Yan ay bells. So they believe that it's the bells would drive away the evil spirits. So so mao na siya nga. Si Katrina Gray when she joined the Miss Universe, her her national costume included pure brass bells. Kana daghan man na beads, plus beads. Pero during kang Katrina Gray, it's all mahal kayo. It's very expensive, the all all brass, but it's gold before. Yes. So maybe uh, Professor Jay has something to say about bells. Uh, related to that, ako nila sinu isulti no sa next question pa man unta. Pero actually, human centered ang art, uh, ang pag pag ang expression sa sa artistry uh, artistry sa pre colonial people, and then. Uh, because yung gisulub ang art, yung i-perform ang art, performative. Nga, if you read the documents, ang babay, dili siya plus karun ng murampa. Nga, murampa siyang mulakaw normally. Daghan siya og bangles, daghan siya jewelry, pero hinay kay siya mulakaw, mustrat. Ah, uh, she walks very slow. No, that's one. But it is actually to signal. 
to signal that the woman is arriving. And I have an experience with that because my colleague in UP, si Madam Ligaya, wears a lot of the jewelry, nga mga brass. And then when you walk, when she walks, we, uh, the students would already know that the teacher is coming. <laughs> Kaya nagkiling-kiling na siya. Alarm yes, bell. Yes, yes. And then they perform movements that could maximize the, 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 the sound of the jewelry. Their hands, they would do like that. They would kiai kiai, sway, and they walk very slowly. Like it's as, as if uh, it is like uh, a performance in its own. Ba? And so, wearing all of this, it, kay, according to the friars, the biggest uh, uh, that the, the pre colonial people really, uh, the sense, uh, the, the kind of sense. Uh, the pre colonial the pre colonial people really celebrates is the sense of sight na uh, dapat flashy dapat showy muna makita nato sa ato ang hantod karon sa ato ang uh, kanang especially if naka abroad ka i describe ang local ang provincial nga uh, expressions as baduy as kanang bisaya, kanang bisaya kakanang ang color combination hayag kaayo mga banderitas mao man siya ang and then we can see that in the kind of colors that uh, they dye the textiles with the 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 flashy colors that captures the tropicality of the Philippines flash the the the, the, the glow of gold created that kind of visual nga dili gud gani dili kita ang na captivated okay we live with it. Si Magellan, pag-abot niya, ang iyan yung mga tao, hindi ko sila mauli. Kay ganahan kay sila magtanaw. And then, giingnan ko sila ni Magellan, told them not to sell their goods. Uh, kay si Magellan, from the boat, they uh, they rented a kind of space or room or house and put in some of the goods for barter with the locals. Di, mahurot na tanan kay, they want to get all of the goods that the locals have. Kay and then, not only that, when Ligaspi arrived in the Philippines, ang first yun niya nga, nga mandate was not to open the graves. Kaya iyang mga tao, when pag-abot yun niya, nang, nangabli og mga lubong. They were stealing. Stealing all of the gold. So, may imagine mo nga, naabot sila here, it's not really us, it's not really them imposing uh, initially imposing their it was really our way of life the kind of visual the pre-colonial visuality that our culture has captivated them they're able to get all of our gold they will do it yeah so that's why um that's magellan said that they told the the natives the cebuanos because they said pigafeta described our ancestors the, the cebuanos as very fair and honest in trading but the okay we were a trading uh people so we should be honest and fair and then they they Magellan told them not to give so much gold in exchange for goods because they were thinking that the next traders who would come would get a lot of gold and then Ligaspi, when he came here, that's what that's what uh, Professor Jay said that he had a mandate because the natives were so angry with the Spaniards, the Spanish soldiers who were stealing the gold of the ancestors, so they can no longer go to paradise. They had gold with them in their graves, so they have to. They they needed the gold for them to go to paradise, so they can no longer go there. So that's why, of course, the natives were so angry and the natives starved the Spaniards because of stealing. Because they did not have, they don't put them inside lock and key. Their houses had no locks. They only had this uh, woven something that they would put their things in it, their, their jewelry, their bahandi in it. They would leave it in their house. It would not be stolen. They would get very big grave punishment they become slaves if they would they would be punished when they steal and then yeah you 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 mentioned about bahandi I'll, I'll add on that because 
uh, while the body was very much celebrated and the body performs the the uh, art that it's we that the body wears ang bahandi that you mentioned mura ang objects were also heavily decorated the ang kaban sa dato ang katong iyahang tobacco itong betel nut ang iyahang uh, ang kuptanan the the scabbard of the weapons and all of the things that they use because they think that the weapon is an extension of the body and any object that is decorated accordingly to the rank it's part of the person so mura siya kanang mura bitaw siya og harry potter na naatoy gi si voldemort ang iyang person gi divide into different gi butang into different objects and then when you gather them up together mabuhi og balik si voldemort siya inana nga the bad the spirit of the owner resides in the things that she use that's why this thing should also be decorated and that's what makes it different like the bahandi nga kung magira kay uso man to because what they don't have structures or fortification what they do every time na ay mangayaw or mo mo adha mo pagig uh, away mo balhin og lugar go sunugon ang house like what uh tupas did when the gaspi came instead of really fighting head on uh ligaspi ni kagyo sila to the mountains and burn the the village and uh Every time, ana na sila. Ilan ng dadun ng ilang bahandi the decorated ones, the objects in a pack, and then ilubung na nila dito, and then mo adto sila sa cave, and then when peace time came, ilan ng ibalik, and that's how decoration and the creativity, uh, artistic uh, uh, intervention sa atong mga kuan, sep uh, demarcates ordinary object and the wealth, the bahandi, and I think kani it's that's the very reason why. The jewelry gathered by Aya, the Surigao, katong na naroon sa Ayala Museum, came in a pack, or as uh, mura man itong usag ito siya ka set, na nakauta nila somewhere in the Uma. Okay, it was, I think, something like that, and na, uh, there's a, there was an attack in the community. They have to leave, they have to bury the 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 gold, and, the, and so uh, they were... Uh, saved from the colonizers. Okay, again, this gold, gold naman ginitong isgota, this gold, when the Spaniards came to really begin the colonization, remember that colonization happened 50 years after with Legazpi, not with Magellan. Uh, they were, they, the locals were asked to donate all the gold, to made into, not all, but to made into chalices. And then, ang ilahaman to, I'll explain later, from the human body, pre-colonial human body, he extolled by the body of Christ. Nga dapat ikatikais ang human body kay evil man ta, kay nasulutong tagtato, ana, nate mga arios, nga nagtagsulubo ta, to iya sayawa ang magsulub sa inana. The new saved body by the blood of Christ, the baptized body, magsulub na na itong purong-purong, katong belo, ana. And so they can already they can't decorate the bodies anymore because by putting on the gold, they would mean that they are the unbaptized. They are the enemies of the friars. So what the friars did was to collect all the gold to decorate into the body of the of the santos. Ah, dili magsulub ko. Pero isulub sa among santo sa parokya. So dito, daghan kayo na siya o donation drive. Nga si Mama Mary, mo nang atong Mama Mary din hi, dilip na sa Mama Mary sa Spain, sa Osana na din ha nga. Pagsuloob dyan ng Arius, ang Mama Mary magkwintas. Oh, it's because nagipang donate sa elite ang ilahang collection of jewelry and gold to the new uh, body, sacred body, which is the... Mo nang ato ang we, we imagine dyan the Santo Intiero as really na agit siya power. Murag yun siya buhi or the mamary nga muhilak mo tanaw ni mo maluoy ni mo and so you they were able to like give and donate to the parish or the friars the gold so lipay kay sila so uh, <laughs> so professor j 
we we would la now like so to our uh, go back so it's actually a discussion of how it transitioned to to the the colonial culture how uh, our pre-colonial uh, decorations and aesthetics was transformed during the colonial times so we would also like to know um what was considered nindot or na discussion anymore by our pre-colonial ancestors what what was aesthetics for them what what makes something beautiful? What is beautiful in their eyes? Lisud kaayo siya i-explain sa ato ang own experience. Kaya ang ilang mga beauty, very different from... Unag-una na kung sila o plastic surgery. Before pa sa modern plastic surgery, mga ilan ang ilang itupong ilang ngipon, ang ilahang teeth, gold, smile. Moment on, ano? Smile pag yun. Mga perfect mo nag-punctuation na smile pag yun, masilawan, hayag jup ay ka. So I think, what is dindot for them, na gani, ato pang makuan ka ron, is horror vacui. We don't leave a space without something in it. That decorative spirit, nga sa balay, mag-decorate kasi mong balay, ibong mama, ikaw siguro as mama, tanan picture frame yun na. Kung kuha na, buslot na siya din, o ka ng blanco na butangan, yun na kalendaryo, Butangan yun na siya. Because we want to occupy a space. Because that means something is special when we put something in there. And so muna siya sa the way they lang sulob, grand, and with that, ang ability yun to showcase, ang ability yun to showmanship. Importante kaayo sa pre-colonial aesthetic na you should be able to showcase it for others to appreciate. Because that's the only way for the society to be in order. Para ma market, para ma ma makita who is the dato, who who's the royals, and who's the the servants, and who's the by them wearing generic clothing like what we are doing now, nga nagmaong ratatanan, nga nagkaroon di takibaw kinsa ang dato kinsa ang pobre. Well, mawon na siya modern, but in the past it should not be that way. Because our art and artistic expression, fashion, jewelry, kanis lang tanan, creates the order of society. Otherwise, if you remove all of this, and if the dato would not perform the rituals, ang kan ang kan naman ay siya kaning pinasuyan o pa si tawag kaning kanang pinasuyan that that fabric ng abaka ng ng mo isulub yun sa dato. Mura siya. Then magkataas man na kanang iyahang head, pudong sa kuan. Muna ang dato na asya'y na asya'y tasel-tasel kanang ipas sa iyaha. Kaya magkataas po na oh, Show mura siya o mura siya o mura siya o sa tatu ba? Ana. Kanis yan ay description ani nga ang dato ko no, ignaug niya sa, sa mga yaw, sa barko, makita yun mo kayo mo, palid man sa hangin. Ang kaning Oh, mura siya mag-flowy, flowy. And then mura yung kuno, kuan ang dato ka ng yung divine ba? So if we remove all of this clothing, ka na ang iyang, iyang, sani, ang iyang pudong, ang iyang bahag, ang kaning iyang jewelry, di good siya mo, di siya ma-ilhan na ang dato siya. Mura ni siya si Queen Elizabeth na kung if you are studying, uh, if you are familiar with British royalty, Kasi Queen Elizabeth, in public uh, functions, she always wear bright colors. Yellow, orange, kanang bright kayo. In the, sa, kala, sa kadagang tao, makita yun mo asa ang queen. In the same manner, inana sad ang kuan. Na asya a bit of excess, flamboyance, uh, kan, uh, uh, flair, and then you perform it with actions. Mosayo sayo ka para mo maximize, and so it gives us. So imagine nga anywhere you look around, this is the kind of clothing our forebears. Murag yun kanabitang always murag always high. Mao na nga naglisod yun ang naglisod ang kanang mga friars. Wabot na siguro ko ana. Nung sa nasa 
<laughs> so we are still in the what is considered oh, aesthetic. Oh, na, oh, I think takuha naman nato unsay oh, guapa. Oh. Ang katug yung later na nang priors. So imagine so, na karon inyong mga agtang flat. <laughs> oh, di na ay siya buhok na dako kaayo. Di mortal sin ba nang itouch ang buhok sa lain? Oh, oh. kay kanang mag mag kanang sana ato ah. kanang sana mag binunlo bugno. Sa kani adto gina nagsugod ang bugno. Once you matouch ang imong hair, dapat imo pong itouch ang hair sa nakatouch sa imong hair. Inana sila. Mm. <laughs> What happens hair, if you have no hair? hair extension. They, they love, hair, hair extension in the past? They love to wear. Dana sila yung wig sa una? Dana, dana, dana. They oh, had hair yeah, extensions yes. already. Ipadakanay man sila. And that. Padakanay o buhok. And then they always trim their lashes. Uh, eyebrows, yes. eyebrows. Arc na siya, naka-arc. Mm. One ang drawings in the Boxer Codex, if you look at the women's faces, the rabi ka, perfect. Mura siya ka ng kilay to tao sa nato ron. Nga, oh, anak gid siya. Mm -hmm. But it was already practiced in the past. So, uh, Professor Jay, when um, when Pigafetta described the wife of Humabon, she, he described her as young and beautiful with fair skin, with long hair, with red lips and red nails. So, nana sila pedicure yes. and manicure at that yes, time. Yes. So, they, they so nana sila lipstick, kay red lips man. So, we, we are, I usually thought when in college, when in UP, during, di ba, our teachers always teach us not to have pre not have colonial mentality not to think of those only the fair skin as the beautiful because brown is beautiful and why is it that pegafeta described uh described um the wife of humabon as fair skin and those the girls the top, topless girls that entertained them with music they were as white as our women in europe so wh why could why could why is it that even in 500 years ago they were already fair skinned or is it because even, uh, of the binukot a lot of writings would say that compared to the tagalogs the visayans really were uh according to the fair skin actually it's uh uh related to that the binukot because the wife of Pegafeta, a uh, wife of, of Humabon. Humabon, was uh, being the wife of the Datu, should be a binukot or must be a binukot. Meaning to say, na asya own house, di siya baka, di siya baka tunub sa saug, uh, na asya servants, and all those ladies surrounding her would always be also sheltered in that same koan. The binukos, if you're familiar with the binukos, they are trained to to memorize the history of the community. So they are chanters, they are the master weavers, and then uh, they should be the repository of intangible knowledge that can be passed to the next binukot to, to uh, ascertain the lineage ba and the, the koan of culture. Yeah. So I have a question, even if it's not in our questions. Uh, when you, you said about, uh, you already mentioned that in our past conversations that our canvas, the, the, art, the artworks of our pre-colonial ancestors were the body or the, those that they bring with them, the weapons, uh, the architecture in their, and then, uh, in, their, in their boats. So we have here, uh, this is from Mar Ma Magindanao, from Maranao, a uh, replica of a, a boat. So they have decors also, and even in the fabric. I'm wondering if, if for example, in prehistoric times in other, other continents, they have this cave art. Do we have those? Because there, there were, the boat, caves were very important. I don't know about this. So um, caves were very important for, for them because they, they thought that it is in caves that they would travel, the, the spirit of the dead would travel going to Juan. It's in the cave. So even in Sikihor, the cave is still very important. They get some uh, medicine and those pangdaot from the caves. I think so is we, there cave art? If cave art as uh, using pigments, uh, 
wala pa gina discover basig na i cave din ha nga angay pa nato ma discover na ah nga na i cave ah recent discovery no dili pod but what i know naman ang petrograph sa anggon no nga katong mga kuan uh, but it's a good if, if there is oh, but wala pa na kayo siya na discuss and talk about but uh, in terms of using pigment as painting uh, we've not seen as extensive as the ones you've seen in unsa man dako pod siya uh, dako siya nga cave maybe who would want to see piper would like to answer that or ikaw dako siya nga cave mga ikaw kay Bao Ferdinand Oh, dito sa microphone. Yeah, please uh, share to us. Oh, kanang, regarding cave na, art. Na, na cave art ko nung nakita sa Anda Buhol. Ah, hello. Uh, with regards to um, cave art, um, I was able to witness one. It's in Anda Buhol. It's called the uh, Lamanok. Um, it's called Lamanok Island, pero when I went to the area, it's not really an island. It's just an extension of Murag Murag Tip. Murag, it's a tip part of Anda, but Murag, it's it looks like an illusion of another island. Pero Murag, um, it's a burial site. Then oh. on its wall, um, nashe kanang art which they used hematite to paint the wall. Murag ang pam bitaw ni magi kana oh, okay. dito sa wall. The, the then same. sa kilid dito, murag dito nagipamutang ang mga boat coffins. So facing siya sa sea, murag. The National Museum of uh, in Bohol. Bohol should. Na they do already study. went there. Okay. They already um uh, before National uh, Bohol National Museum um redesigned the uh, ilang exhibit. They used to have a replica sa ilang gallery. The, oh the Lamanok uh, cave uh, representation. Okay. So they already al already protected that area mm. from from those who would... <laughs> the same the, the same because in island Southeast Asia kanang Sulawesi mga mga ana naapod na siya in Indonesia ang ang favorite motif yun ang kanig yung mga palms na ilang ikuan and then more siya resist paint print nga Antod mo. Yeah. But not as extensive as the ones you see at the Laco cave painting yes. in Altamira, Spain. Oh, in France, in Altamira, Spain. Karang mga, mga grand bison, mga kabaw, mga anak. Dili mga anak, no? Daghang salamat, uh, Ferdinand. And, and also to Professor Jay. We have more questions for Professor Jay in a while. And also, we invite you to write your questions, those online. Uh, please write your questions and comments at... Uh, at our face at the comment section of our facebook live event so we would like to have our our uh i mean indigenous aesthetics to show you so right now so according to of course our art in pre-colonial times are those the fabric so right now i am wearing a um hablon from argao so this is uh also hand painted also hand painted and also um the women did this and then they they, they let me try i don't know yet how but <laughs> just uh sitting on their bench and uh sa on pagtindak sa <laughs> sa hand looms but um they also say that actually they for them to make this into a product all of them has a contribution for this. I don't know. I, I wasn't able to ask the process. So of course, um, so we have uh, we have here uh, before you. Uh, that's a another hablon. So we have other hablon uh, items at our sinugatan gifts or tibu. Of course, we wear our heritage to support also our crafts people, the women, the weavers. So so we we wear what they what they create uh, also to for them to continue um, our uh, doing um, crafting our what is our local uh, art so so that's uh, another hablon so we have also they also have this um, drawstring and pouch drawstring bag and pouch so, 
So it is at our Sido Gatan gifts from Cebu, but they were not able to bring it. So um, CJ is wearing a design, a dress um, by the Talaandig. So it is the Talaandig really made that. I brought that here. <laughs> so they have this design. There are meanings also to the colors and to the design. So for example, the, the red is for the bravery of the warriors. The white is for for the wisdom of their leaders. Uh, that's for the Talaandig and also for the Higaunon. And the, the black is for the dark spirits that need also to be honored and appeased. You offer also to them, don't forget them, because if you forget them, if you ignore them, they would get angry and you will be punished. <laughs> don't forget the dark. So there should be a balance. And also the, the yellow, uh, for the Higaonon, so for the Talaandig, there's no yellow. For the Higaonon, there is yellow because it represents our being children of the sun. It's the eye of the sun. And for the, the, the diamond or the square, it means also uh, something. It means justice. So uh, the people should live in justice. So that's, those are, so what, what our, the aesthetics of our, our indigenous peoples, like the pre our pre-colonial ancestors, everything has a meaning. So the 1990s aesthetics, do they have meaning? Maybe they have. So so we have the, here the uh, so he, she CJ is wearing a talaandig uh, design dress with uh, the necklace is also for the bae of the higaunon. So you have yellow. Pwede naman ishbal so maonat siya so and also the headdress and also earrings so the earrings of of um so maonat siya it's a uh, complicated beadwork <laughs> so so even our uh, our indigenous people so you, we always say that for us to know the the life the the, the lifestyle or the the life of our or the art uh, forms of our pre-colonial ancestors, we just need to look at the the indigenous communities, in, especially in Mindanao. So they are still, um, because they are not colonized the same as the Christianized natives like like we are, so, so they are able to retain uh, most of their um, ancient practices. So even the rituals. So, but they are not anymore dancing uh, recently when I, it's not, I, it, before the, the, our, our ancestors would really, part of the ritual is really dancing and music. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently when I went to, to Mindanao, the ritual that I witnessed was just um, prayers and chanting and offering. But, um, napakay uban isyo din ha, CJ, mora to? <laughs> oh, so ang imong. So they they also have bracelets and anklets. So we have we still have patanaw earrings available, replica uh, replica of patanaw earrings available, and uh, or not we have anklets, bracelets, ne necklaces of of the the tibuli, and uh, also what's that? We have the fabric at the back of uh, Professor J. So that's the Patanao earring tinalak. replica. So we have the Tinalak. So there was even a design, the Gundong. The design, uh, one, one design was said to be the design of a very, the last design of a very beautiful Tibuli princess. So I always ask for meaning for those designs. So the Tibuli also, their design, their colors, their traditional colors. So we have here, so the 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 belt. So it supposedly it should be in front, Uncle Anvik, but it's so big for CJ. She put the the brass fastener at the back. So can you show the the front? So for them, their their traditional colors, they have the same colors: black, red, and white, or brown or black. But it has a different meaning for white. For brown or black, it means the earth. It, it means the earth, uh, black or brown. And the red is for the bravery also. So, and the white for them is, it's the 
Fudalo. It's the abaca spirit for the Tibuli. The abaca spirit gives them dreams of what design to create. So mauna siya. So the Tibuli told me that they are now making, for example, this bracelet. This bracelet. So they made this for me when I went there. So it's um just a design. They have this wax. So you said you you saw. You saw that at the introduction of this event, how they make this uh, traditionally the brass jewelry. And, and they said that in the past, they would create design based from nature. So it, they would imitate nature. For example, they would create bracelets with the design of the wave of Lake Cebu. So for example, the the weapons, it comes from the design of the forest. So. But right now, they are now making designs that are not usual, the indigenous designs, but those, the market, market demand. Yeah, yeah. So if their, if their, if their uh, client would, or the one who would want to buy, wants to, I actually asked them, I sent them designs of the pre-colonial jewelry. And they said, it's very hard to make this patanaw, so only Ferdinand, the Tibuli could no longer do this. The, the, I mean, this this design of the patanaw, so the brass cutlets many with gold, diba. So others is only brass. So they, they are able to, to make the, those wave design, but they are now making some design that are already from the demands of the market, market driven. <laughs> So, <laughs> so maybe the they bride. need also to learn again. And then those who know about our pre-colonial design, so we show them so that they can again make these designs, those designs made in the past. So this was according to nature in the past. So, so even that, we don't know, the Patanao earrings, is what, what part, is it a flower or what is it? In, is it a... Uh, a fish tail, uh, flowers and leaves, um, uh, flowers and leaves. So even the patanaw earrings. So uh, thank you very much to. So thank thank you very much to CJ. So our question now for Professor Jay. So I would like to remind the audience online that if you have questions, you can already type your questions and comments because we would give them to. Professor Jay, we would read them to him. Um, ah, so we have a question uh, before our next question, Professor Jay. Um, uh, so this is a question from, from uh, so Raul is now here on, 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 on site. And uh, advance happy birthday to Raul for tomorrow. Uh, and then so many years, so Raul is a history graduate from the University of San Carlos, and he is a heritage advocate always in our events. So um, there, there is a question from Fe Balanta Coleta. May, may pabango na din ba noon? Are there perfumes? Yes, 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 yes. 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 Sige, please uh, tell us about that. Uh, they, the hair that they wear, I mentioned that it's Bande. They have very, very long hair. And then they bun it into rose-like buns on top of their head. For them to care for this long, long hair, they use fragrances uh, from the coconut oils, the lemons, the... the di ba naataana ka ng, uh, What do you call that kind of lemon? Green? So hot. No, no, no. They're, uh, Lime. It's a kind of lime, but it is intended to to clean uh, to clean the hair. Mura siyang shampoo, and, the, and the, there are wood essences that they use uh, to as perfume. Uh, si Scott Henry Scott has a list of this uh, fragrances and material that the uh, pre-colonial people use uh, to make their perfume. But yeah. Uh, and also, they, they love to put, the women love to put flowers on their hair, fragrant ones. Yes. Uh, when the Chinese came and traded with them, 
uh, they would buy some kind of flowerets uh, they put into their hair with the bun. But in the absence of those uh, uh, flowers that the Chinese sell, they choose, uh, they have sele a selection of uh, fragrant flowers to put alongside their, uh, the way they do their hair. Yeah, so it was William Henry Scott or was it Alcina or the Boxer Codex that said that the women always wear perfume. Mm. So they always take a bath. So, <laughs> yeah. so I remember one resource person in the past who was saying that uh, the, the natives could know, it was just a joke, the natives could not have wash their bahag kay wala pa tide at dunga time but then i said no i was thinking no it was the spaniards who had not washed their clothes for a long time in the ship baho kay to sila so and of course the women and the natives always took a bath we had river, we have rivers always so it is the hygiene so we have hygiene uh, practices already yes they Gika needed to have gikan og uma before sila mo pa uli mo agi gyud sila og sapa maligo and then i uh, add lang na ko ni uh, na i like when when we say uh, we we are talking about uh, artistic expression no pero ang pinaka perf, uh, mo himo man ani ang gitawag nilag panday no? panday is the artisan murabo na siya yung, ang pinaka closest na matawag na itong artist in pre-colonial time. Panday sa kahoy, panday. Atong panday karon we think of the carpenter man that makes houses, right? But in the past, when you say panday, there are different types of panday. Panday sa kahoy, that's a carpenter. Panday sa bulawan, the goldsmith. Panday sa uh, iron, the ironsmith. Uh, and then all of this. And then, kuwang mana ang iron, ang supply sa iron ni hit compared to other compared to gold Muna nga, they traded with iron uh, from the chinese and other uh, traders in exchange for gold and so the ang naarag yung monopoly of access to iron is the datu Muna, the, the, the datu is best is the best uh, silver smith or uh, iron smith in the because naasha access to iron tungod kinihit ang iron what they do, na as a certain type, I forgot the name, certain type of murag sundang, nga they, they design nga ang, ang iyahang, si tawagan ng koan? Iyang blade, o oh, si tawagan na, kanang, ang, mag na siya ang koan, no? Can we show ang, the Chris? Oh, on, not ang ang entire blade, ang entire blade is wood. Ang entire blade is wood. Nga iyang katan sa tunga i-insert niya ang ang nipis ka ayo nga nga iron de iyan nang i-taper in such a way nga gikan sa iron nga tumoy mutmukuan sa wood murag magkuno nga kanang iron wood ana and then in that way matipid nila ang iron so makita nimo ingenuity and then naabot pang gutaan ni tungod sa kaligo sa sapa because after nila mang mang sana mag farming maligo sila igaligo nila ila na lang ipang iksa ang ilahang mga nagiban kato and buflo tra siya buflo tra siya dili gyud mga wa so maligo sila samsam sila but all their uh, their knives and their bolos ana mulutaw ra siya kay woodman it would hmm. float yeah and so uh, the the friars would say uh, the Visayan artisan, the Visayan panday, the Visaya panday can do anything with their bolos. Pay buhata o lantay, lamisa, balay, mabuhat na nila by a bolo alone. Nang wala ju kiti daghan ka mga tools nga mga mga specific nga specific to a certain practice. Yes. Yes. So, okay, mauna yes. siya. That's why. So, baligo sila. They, they take a bucket. <laughs> the question was, did they have fragrances? fragrances. Yeah, so, yeah. yes. And then they took they took a bath. They took a bath every day. Not just for gone. Ganyan ilang rituals were uh, rich with aromatic uh, elements. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. So, of course, you would know also, of course, they need to take a bath because when they, ay, di na lang. 
they also we would also like to show you later the another replica made by Ferdinand uh, the sex gadgets the penis rings and pins also work of art that makes them have be joined with the woman from night until morning so if they they, they need to take a bath before doing that yeah 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 <laughs> being joined with the woman from night until morning you should take a bath before doing it <laughs> hygiene the woman will okay, so they, the woman has so a lot of fragrances so the warrior should take a bath before the, before um before okay. before night time before and night time even after a bloody vacation encounter <laughs> it was the pain that makes it like uh, huh it's the pain that makes them happy yeah actually <laughs> actually the women the women complain to the friars the women actually complain to the friars because they want to bring back the the koan the penis rings yes and that's okay, why they don't they enjoy make... anymore their sex with their husbands oh without, with, without the women were very powerful you should remember that at pre-colonial they have a say to the husband when to do it and not to do it they have uh that it's another koan. yes and also <laughs> dr earl kiope vice president uh, in Siliman university said that the woman would ask first Show me the design of your ring. Yeah, yeah. Show me the design of your penny string if I want to be with you. So art is very important. If the your 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 design of the ring, so that's why I said the ring before is the penny string. The ring right now is the diamond ring. But <laughs> show me the design of your ring if I want to be with you. So art is important for that. So another question. So uh, our online audience was not able to react yet about that. So um, so uh, th there is a question from Liberata. I mean, it's a comment from Liberata Polycarpio. Liberata, from which part of the Philippines or the world are you? And uh, she said, wow, at last, the pre-colonial Philippine history. Congratulations. And also, um, Liberata is asking, could you please include Piloncitos? Were they really pure gold with hole later? What's Piloncito? And then also Sobi Wing, our um, heritage advocate, Cebuano Canadian, uh, based in Canada, and is asking, uh, um, can you speak on the use of banig in aesthetics and the design? Are banig part of pre-colonial culture? Also, can you speak on the way men wore earrings? Where stretch ears common and did yeah. that have significance? So tagsa tagsa lang ni. So <laughs> so banig. which one would you like to answer first? So yeah, banig is very important. It's part of that very uh, very uh, mature weaving tradition in in Cebu in particular. And uh, uh, when even Pigafetta mentioned about it, about how good the women uh, weaves. The textiles and we have two kinds of weaving weaving for textiles and weaving for basketry uh munisiang basketry banig uh kaning o sa ganing amakan kani sila nga, nga uh, weaving technique and then uh ang banig also if Familiar ta sa banig tradition sa ba base bas a bas bas ba, uh, base. samar oh base so inana siya o guan ang ato a uh, colorful put siya and uh, na put siya patterns ng mura o murag ilaramang ang gani ang murag ang saw si si pigafet as si alcina has a very nice description a chapter on the weaving because ang saub sa hari sa dato kay slabs of bamboo mano nagi koan for it for the sala to be beautiful na asle i weave nga mga uh, abaka or unsa na nga circular nga mura siya i carpet nila ba para ang ang hangin ang dili siya musod nya iyang masil ang bamboo nga dili mga tagak didto ang mga sinsiyo or sa mga kuan kay uh, ang 
sa itawag anang sa bambo? Slats. Kana lipak, uh, no? Ana slats. And then na asiyay uh, and then uh, mo na uh, mats are important because they make the play uh, the house look uh, clean and look beautiful with uh, the introduction of colors and patterns and even uh, the house of the king si Dato, Dato. he was like diba uh, was squatting oh. on a beautiful mat so it was very it was part of uh, that tradition of weaving and even now badian is very known for their uh, mat weaving and other uh, places that has uh, revived uh, mat weaving. But ours now is not really as beautiful as the ones you've seen in Basay. Basay. Mo gine pinakanindot yun in the... Badiana to in Cebu. And then the next question The next was, question is uh, the earrings uh, from Sobi. How are the different ways to wear the earrings? Uh, yes, yeah, siguro na mapuno si Kuana ni, but I know na ngay ter... Kasi itawag ane? Kana siya? Panika. And then what do you call that, that katong uh, studs? Namang po siya studs nga ring? Oo oh, ka na? Naasya ni mo. Oman to ibutangan nila. Oh, Mga inana, no? Uh -oh. So there are, there are, for men and for women, there are different ways uh, and different kinds of uh, earrings and jewelry and different uh, ways of wearing them. Uh, for men, uh, na anang murag uh, but your concern really is naaba ang mga r mga uh, nagpitay na... Can you show the question again from Sobi? So, uh, I think because of uh, uh, design. On you speak, uh, were stretch ears common and yeah. did it have significance? Yeah, stretched ears are common and then e even uh, the friars would say nga masud ang usa kakumo sa, sa ma-stretch na pagbitay na siya uh, I don't know if there's a significance or like uh, symbolic significance to uh, stretched earrings, but I think through time that the body would be like mo kuyot mangganitan mo mo sag manggani ang skin with age. I think it also has to do with that. Nga, uh, many many years of wearing this he heavy uh, earrings mo mo inat yut siya. And then uh, a lot of writings would say nga uh, grabe mo abot sa shoulders ang ears and then you can already uh, you can enter your fist the whole of the ears <laughs> So uh thank you very much professor J so we have um uh, also from uh, the question regarding the the form of money uh, the piloncitos but then of course even the earrings are a form of the the use for trading trading but the, but na asa like coins ka gi di kay ko familiar sa sa system sa coins but i know there's like ah so so si si ko an si ferd ferd ferdi ferdi ferdinand uh ascaraga would answer the piloncito kay he has a uh, research about this Ang microphone. Hello. Um, with regards to the piloncitos, no. Um, what I've noticed based on my research, it's more concentrated in the central uh, Luzon area, yeah. particularly in the Pila, Laguna, Pasig, or the Santa Ana, but. I haven't heard um, any discovery here in the Visayan area in particular. However, when it comes to currency, even the earrings, since it would it's made of gold, it can be readily used as an exchange, a mode of um, exchange, a currency, or even a piece of, if they have beads like this, one beads can have already an equivalent for a certain product. Or if they have a, just like this one, an agate beads, important beads from india china um they can exchange it they can barter it with beads yeah, to yeah. beads gold to gold or from any product so it's not only the piloncito should be considered um 
as a kanang murag mode of exchange although the pilon sito is also part of the uh, ancient tradition um based on kanang mga kanang mode of exchange thank you to our resource person <laughs> Ferdinand and also uh we have from the National Grand Centennial Committee page um Ik Ben Milani saying interesting topic and also Brenda Loste says good afternoon from SDO Tapat, uh, Tagig City and Patero Silangan Elementary School. So daghang salamat for your comments and your questions. Please uh, uh, keep your uh, keep those questions and comments coming because uh, we would after this few or uh, two two more questions for Professor Jay, we would ask our uh, audience here our uh, to react regarding tattoos si Koan, si our tattoo artist, indigenous tattoo artist, uh, Piper Abbott. Koan is a spontaneous, right? spontaneous reaction. <laughs> and then uh, we have also um, an open forum for those on site. And also, um, we also have trivia quiz with exciting prices. And I see the tour guides here taking notes. So I think they would get perfect score in the trivia quiz and they would just uh, compete on who has the fastest finger or hand to raise the hand to answer. <laughs> so be our question now for, uh, and then if you have more questions, you can still give, give your questions at the comment section. So this question, we have, Mragdili Mahuman atong story about pre colonial times. We have so much to discuss, and two hours or one hour is not enough. But then we need to have more, uh, to have two more questions from me. So this question is um, how, how did the Europeans describe our work, the works of art in, pre, in the pre colonial period? So when they, when they came here, when the, the Spaniards uh, or the Europeans, the Pigafetta was from, is it from Italy, Venice? Italian, uh, And then, of course, Magellan was Portuguese. And uh, so we have Spaniards. There, there were Europeans who came here. And how did they describe the works of art in, in, what, in what, what they saw in our, uh, in our islands when they came here more than 500 years ago? So, Professor Jay. Yeah, we should, uh, I think, begin with a bit of contextualization. When Magellan arrived in the Philippines, it was the height of high renaissance in Italy and in Europe. Nine years since the nine years old Pang Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo, naabot si Magellan here. So inana ang ang art nga nakita sa mga Europeans when they came to the Philippines. And then, and then they're kind of, because he, Pegafetta tends to write about the culture of the place where, where he, he was in. And he tried to, wrote, to write about the art of the Cebuanos. And he cannot really find a good equivalent to the painting practice in Europe or the sculptural practice in Europe. So Pegafetta made a very uh, a description of a piece of sculpture nga anito nato and then yan ang i-describe in a very in a nga na ibang sungo na ibang kanang ni ugly and kuan looking nga sculpture mahadlok ka ni mo ni ilang date ko no and then si Cherino also wrote about uh a piece of sculpture nga gi, a piece of sculpture nga yan nakita sa Mindanao nga ang yan description unskillfully done niya ugly piece of sculpture so imo na siyang tanaw and uh, used for barbaric rituals so imo na siyang tanaw yun ang framework nila when reading looking evaluating the value of our artistic uh, express artistic work here Kuan yud siya kanang ubos uh, compared to the ones in uh, Europe. So, ang ilag yung na amazan, uh, di, man, di man sila maka approximate sa painting of sculpture. Ang ilag yung na, 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 na 
attracted to is really the, the, the way we were dressed and the way we bear ourselves in public. The jewelry, the textiles, the weaponry, the, the beads, the rituals, uh, nga, nga asani mag-abot tanan. And so, speaking of rituals and the and performing, uh, wearing the sinina, the tanan, in a, in a ritual, na realizan nila, what they realized was that while we might not have the same kind of art that they've done, uh, painting, sculpture, what we share in common was the love for fanfare, colors, uh, 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 festivals, nani, uh, Kaya ang mga, mga Spanish ba ni sila? Gusto po ni sila ang mga kuan. And what they realized was that if they want to introduce Catholicism to the Filipinos via the European culture na ilang gipractice, that at that time, High Renaissance, mao naman ni siya ang the name mga orders the 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 friars that came here were Augustinians. They have bow of poverty. They wear black clothes, and then compare it to the royalties. Nga magsulub colorful gold na ang pari magsulub o black sa iyang everyday. Pero di kini la reconcile. The natives would demand the colonial the the, the colonial uh, Spaniards to really show to them na powerful sila. Nya, di man ang pari magsulob ra magsutana nga itong. Hindi nila masabtan ba? So, the fri- si Father Villa Lubos would say nga for a friar, for a priest to be successful in his work to evangelize in the Philippines, they have to perform their power visually. They have to show to them the power of the Christian God. Mauna nga, instead, ilang ba o poverty, nga mag-fasting sila, nga mag-kuan-kuan sila, magpa-procession silang taas kaayo. Kay maura may, makuan nga magkit mura siya og ang old ritual ba in a new Christian context. So the priest really, for them, for Christianity to take root in the Philippines, they utilize that need for visuals. Gani ang, ang basilika o ang katedral di Cebu, mag-away na sila. Kaya mga tao, maingon nga, dili powerful ang katedral, ang ginoo sa katedral. Kaya wa nahuman ang building. Dugay man kaya nahuman ang building. And then the Santo Nino Church, kaya tuaman din ito, mga nindog, tugsuloob ang pare, mas powerful ang ginoo dito. So muad to sila. So th- there, there's uh, the writings of the friar requesting an inter- uh, uh, kanang subsidy from the king to build houses, uh, to build uh, churches, and to buy chalices. Inanagilang rason, because if they will not showcase the kind of grandeur that Catholic, the, the Catholic faith has, ma mubalik yun sa old faith ang mga ang mga tao. Thousands of years we were doing that. And all of a sudden, moabot ang, ang, ang mga Espanyol and magpatuhuon tagbago. So ilag yung gisakyan. So ang mga diwata na himong mga santos, ang katong white lady na himong Mama Mary. So ilara nang gi, manong sayon pag-assimilate. Oo. So dahil salamat, uh, Professor Jay. So, um, so that is now a discussion about um, how the how we were colonized culturally so they had to show that they also have gold if we have gold they also have gold so of course they will call a colo- uh, uh, spanish nga mag show up lang nitog sinina mo gawas as kapitan igagi niya bisag dili siya kapitan nga military ilang taw cap murakato karon ba mo mukuan pero kung di gani ilang taw gon og uh, banyaga nga ilang ingon nga ang kani among amo 
kay daa ko ni pare na ay nagdaog mga servants ang pare wag gyud butang kay bao poverty lagi in down siya wag gyud butang eh. nag nag naglakaw ana ni ang mga tawo nga ni uban niya nagingon nga akanis yang tawhana didto sa in their in his uh, the place where he come from he must be a nobody sent to the philippines because wala he doesn't have any possession and he should show mo so idana gyud ang ato ang expectations nga things has to be seen nga mo na bitang sa mga pista uh, nga mangutang gyud ta to have a, a fiesta if to buy new curtains to buy new mga new plates just to show to our neighbors and our relatives and our friends that we are we are well off now uh, we we can produce the fiesta yeah so of course uh, at, in pre-colonial times the the uh, pegafeta or even alcina would describe that the meal time would be they would have meal time that would extend from four to five hours and the, during those meal times or dinner or or the, those feasts they ha, there is dancing music singing and dancing playing of musical instruments so music and dance are those mm. that i think um was described by the the spaniards as we are very good in it mm. so it is comparable to their european mm. music mm. or even we had better poetry than they mm. have mm. so but they also described the tattoo as very elegant right mm. so at first <laughs> elegant ana, <laughs> until they were already creating a social order the yes. poblacion the poblacion against the munang intramuros nga naay naay murag oh, so bajo de campana kana murag the new civilization dapat makabati ka sa tingog sa bell of the church and you are part of the ta new town so those living outside must be the unbaptized the demonic the, yes. and those who are still wearing the tattoo are they are the worshippers of satan mangkukulam the mananambal and they, they demonize everyone who could not fit into the new social order yes so they would now call our works of art as works of the devil mm -hmm. so so that's why they would replace it with their own so they would advertise their own uh culture or their art form like their own music that's why we would discuss that we have an exciting discussion of the history of the guitar this july stay tuned for that to replace our religion so it's a very exciting discussion this july that's july 15. we have a video about that so anyway so for work of the devil, do we have already our replica of the ring and the pin? Did, did you get any, any, wala, wala, wala mo kakuha? Naa? Kinsay mo show. So, si Koan, si Raven na lang. So this, uh, so we would like to show you another work of the devil. Because this is a work of the devil, Ferdinand. So a replica. So because this gives pleasure to the... This gives pleasure to the woman. So what what gives pleasure to the woman is evil for the for the Europeans for our colonizers. So, dili ala work of the alag alag di na ma show di ma show ala di gahi out di ni hang ako sad. Hala, ako sad. Nakuhaan ko, no? Na, 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 wala na. Okay na. Dari na lang. Ah, is, ah, ihatag na lang sa ako. Okay. Dili ma show. So, we have something. We are, there is something here because the camera that is supposed to show. Hala, ni hang na sad ko. Di kahit is sad ko. Hey, hey, there, there, there. <laughs> di, dari kang, 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 okay ra. So, ang, 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 ang laptop ra mo ni hang. So, na, na, makitaan ako. So, so, uh, so this is the NASA sides of Boxer Sakra, Bletics, no? Sagra. This is the penis ring declared by the Spaniards as work of the devil. And this is now uh, made, uh, created a replica, the replica of the 
evil, demonic penis ring is uh, made by the demonic Ferdinand. <laughs> so, uh, so this there is another design. So actually, actually the the description is bigger than this. What was the description? What was the diameter? Se seven centimeters. Oh, and then you know the the modern version of this is the bulitas, very small. Gamay kay ang bulitas, pero ang bulitas kay insert raman, di ba? They would put this, the insert. They would get this. You look the difference between the 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 and then the bulitas, very small, grabby. <laughs> so they, they, but this is already secret, di ba? The, the the use of this because this is. Uh, has been declared for 300 years as work of the devil. The woman does not want to have a sexual relation with a man without this and without seeing the the design. And then the, the and then they wanted the, the the possession of the dog style. And then the 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 Spaniards would say it's demonic, and they would beat up the natives if they would find out that they are still doing that possession. Grab you know, sila. They were stalking the natives. They would go as far as the bedroom or sa the forest to look at the natives. What is the position? <laughs> 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 so, so this is the so this design or this uh, gadget is described as a work of the devil. So, so, so that's how the Europeans describe our works of art that gives. They, of course, the women were and the gays were the most powerful in pre-colonial times because they were the ones who would say they would they would um, perform the rituals for everything from birth until death, and of course they cannot go to war, they cannot have amulets without the ritual. So and then of course the women and the gays were demonized, and everything that gives pleasure to the woman and to the gay are works of the devil very bad <laughs> so anyway so so now that my next question if you have questions please uh, okay not raven so we would like to ask professor jay regarding the impact of colonization on indigenous art so in the native or the the our ancestors um, art what what was the impact what, of colonization what really shifted uh it's the same creative energy na until now muna nga ang Cebu mo siguro siya UNESCO creative city of design and craftsmanship is still here it's still the same kind of passion to create like for everyone matag usa na to we are artists in our own right naagyud tay makamahuan in the same manner nga in the past pre colonial time all women knows how to weave all the men were pandais they carve they make tables they make chairs and the kind of creative energy I can sense if, even until now with uh, how we we uh, can uh, express ourselves creative, creatively. And ang shift lang from the pre-colonial and to the, to the colonial period is that that object of uh, affection that we put our creative energies to from the pre-colonial body the human body to the body of Christ uh, sa colonial period ni shift siya ba nga from decorating the human body as the temple of individuality the church became now that temple so makita nimo ang tattoo would the decorations that they they carve onto the the sundang handle the kind of design that you see sa kanang earrings and can now be seen in the relief carvings of the facade of churches you can see the kind of uh, uh, patterns that once you can see in the tattoo makita na nimo sa na shift lang siya ba the kind of visual visual uh, patterns uh, motifs that we usually see before isulob karon nabutang na siyag piece of architecture and then ang pinaka object na of uh, of uh, of where we 
put our creative uh, works kay ang simbahan na yun, ang, ang Santo Nino, ang Mama Mary, ang Ana. And then what happened to the human body, the catechism, uh, Rezal Maharis would call the catechism of the body, nga gitudluan ta nila sa pagpugong sa kaugalingon. Kay ganahan man kahit sensual man kahit ang uh, culture sa pre-colonial, we love to see things bright, energetic, ganahan tag kanta, music, binuntagay yung kinantahay, inumanay, binuntagay yung inum. Kanang kiat, lakiat yun. Ana, makigaway iso yun. Kanang, kanang kuan, bugno, bugno yun. Nung no, naagita sa sa kana siya ba and what they thought that was to temper down the the spirit ang ato ang atong urges muna nga they taught us uh, the mortifications nga the concept of sin nga ang lawas makasasala ang lawas mo ay gateway to sin unang magluhod og pila ka oras atubangan sa altar magluhod sa purtahan sa simbahan hang to the altar and then we 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 do the lashes uh, weeping to purify the body so from the body as the celebrated uh, body nagsulob og mga bulawan na mga tattoo that marks the the uh, feet in war ya karon pag abot sa kuan Natangtang na siya, makasasa siya nga lawas. And then even until now, that's what we think our bodies are. Sometimes makonsensya ta kung too much na tang kaun, makonsensya ta nga too much na tang uh, pleasure with penis rings, makonsensya ta nga murag. Ana, okay. uh, that's how we, we are already framed to think of our bodies. So kana in the same manner, ni shift sa giyod ang art, ah, uh, to uh, to that kind of thinking i'll focus siguro to illustrate lang uh, sculpture siguro murag from there, there's the northern tradition of sculptural practice nga if you're familiar with the bulol of the igorot as a kanikol delera the sitting deity uh, ancestral spirit na rice god uh, no rice deity nga ilang i bubo ikaligoon og dugo and then the, the, the black patina so kana familiar man ta ana and then we go down south the southern tradition sa indigenous sculpture would be the muslim the ukir na kanang mga binuwakan mura og mga naaba diri wala yung ukir diri no o o kana o nana kanang and that that, that turog ang mapakita siguro nato asama ay kana lang yes oh yeah abo diri no o kani kaning uh, this more leaf like oh o mga maranao mindanao patterns so oh and and mauna siya ang naapod sa southern tradition kita ang ato ang ang ato adiri na amantay sculpture nga gitawag og tawtaw and gani si uh, Chirino would write that one of the Jesuit fathers have seen in one of the homes that they visited 200 or more statua. Nga, gagmay statuits, tau-tau, ang ilang tawag, murag figurines ba? Because every time a relative would die, dapat the, the father or the, the panday of the family should create a, a, a tau-tau to symbolize that relative so when you when the priest uh, went inside, makita niyang display sa tanan yun, mapila na ka generation ka ipasa manimo, nga so tanan nga relatives and what they did that they like what Magellan did was to enforce the burning of idols, iba sa sa his sa history na anay usa ka adlaw nga nagburn na silang tanag uh, idols so gipang sunog puto na destroy puto but what I can see as uh, what the locals uh, did was to supplement it, uh, was to supplant, to, to change it to a figurines of saints. Kaning gitawag na to, nga kaning santo, bisaya santo, nga nagkakuang murag, gidlay lagnaw, murag mga bulolpod, nga mga santo ninyo, na idagahan-ana sa mga museum, mga anti-collectors, they love to collect that. 
na grotesque faces na mga murasiya o indigenous culture like the bulul looking but it represents not their forebears anymore but San Isidro Labrador, San Roque, San Vicente Ferrer, ni mga 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 hadlokig mga naong gagmay and i think some of our lolas kept this kinds of of sculpture in their houses nga uh, nasa altar and gani mo ni si mahal na ni ang baligya na ni karon but uh, that's what the, we borrowed from the the northern tradition and then what we also borrowed from the southern tradition especially for us here in cebu ang kaning bu- buhol urna kanang mo murag uh, home altars na wa man akong picture but the the bu, the bu, buhol or cebu urna mura siya several layers nga naay gamay grotesque santo sa tunga and then na siya flip flip na murag mga kanang baroque uh, nga mga motifs uh, i hope you're familiar with this na sa Val San Diego ancestral house o oh, ana and then uh, the colors are very much reflective of the southern tradition the blues reds uh, whites yellows nga makita nimo sa maranao ukir na koan na na siya sa uh, buhol orna but and anyway uh, what is important really is that we should re- uh, note that the kind of creativity that the filipinos in general not just as cebuanos still remains the same we are a very creative people and we've seen that with uh, the things that we produce, the ingenuity, wala tay mga tools, but we can make these things, huwang ta og materials, but we can still produce something uh, creative. Uh, what change lang is the kind of things that we produce, but the spirit, the Cebuano, the Filipino creative spirit is very, very much alive and dynamic. So, uh, dagang salamat, uh, Professor Jade. They are still fixing my camera. So, so, uh, so uh, there is a, a comment here from um, from Brenda Loste saying, uh, "Mabuti na, na lang, mababang uri ng ginto ang nahukay na mga igurot sa Cordillera para hindi paginteresan ng mga Espanyol na gagamitin sana sa Seven Years War." So, and then there is another uh, comment from Dibirata Polycarpio saying, "Reduction." strengthening Filipino values towards the Catholic religion. And the church was in the center of the population so that when they hear the church bell tolling, they will pray or attend mass. Yeah. So that's what you said about the bell. So um, humanism, Sergei, uh, expression in sculpture, painting, literature, uh, etc. by the agents of Renaissance. Mm-hmm. So it's just a comment reaction mm-hmm. from your discussion. So um, we would now have, I, I am giving my last question for uh, uh, Professor Jay regarding, um, so we have discussed the impact of colonization on indigenous art. And uh, my last question is, of course, for the young people to whom we dedicate all our endeavors <laughs> to, to the future of our land, our youth. So we would now like to know uh, for you, as a, an arts teacher, an art teacher, and a professor, um, why do we, or as a people, do we need to know, and especially the youth of the day, why do we need to know um, our, and to, to trace and to know about our pre-colonial aesthetics? What's the importance of this topic today? <laughs> so last, <pag> yun, no? <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with uh, uh, knowing our identity. and. Uh, I think if we start to study, do more research, and teach others about uh, the beauty of pre-colonial so- Filipino society, then we become more rooted as a person. We, we, we begin to understand why certain uh, traits that, and practices that we still do now, uh, uh, we, we can't seem to forego. That the way we want uh, visuals yuta. we want to decorate our houses uh, we throw parties the kind of hospitality that we afford our visitors this has a lot to do with how our ancestors uh, 
did it in the past and shared to us through the generations. And I think with pre aesthetics and art, uh, being an art teacher, I, I, I really believe in the power of art to change as communities and societies because art is the expression of the very soul of a people. Uh, Mo laging samo as a fine arts may ngon dayon among mga students nga naglisod siya having having difficulties with their with their parents kay dili supportive kay ano mag fine arts fine arts nga drawing drawing ra man siya and and uh, oh wala future mga ana and then we've seen a, uh, in history if you really study history nga a lot of major uh, major achievements of humankind were done by creative minds. Creativity is at the very core of innovation. Creativity is a very core of uh, producing something out of nothing to, to, to improve. And if we remove that creative mind from our, student, from our youth and giving them a very strict this laka explore and go on and uh, think for themselves what they truly like and what do they truly want to do, then we, the future of the Philippines, uh, of our country, would be uh, very hard to our country would be very hard to develop. Kay pugnan man ato permi restrictive man ba? And a creative mind, and especially an informed creative mind, a well rooted mind in culture arts would mean a better citizen would mean someone who could stand on his principles and so can defend our values and what the philippine the filipino should be worthy of so mona ni balik balik nato permi sa amo asa up nga tudluan yud ang mga estudyante o kultura kay Dilit naman ito ikalimod nga we are a globalized, uh, uh, globalization is here. We will be influenced by Americans, we will be watching Hollywood. We can't stop our kids in in uh, watching Peppa Pig or Kinsa Pana, Dora the Explorer. These are the, the pop culture that they consume. But we are not saying uh, we can't enjoy this uh, foreign uh, uh, products, but we are saying is that when we do, we know and uh, we are equipped on how to deal with this without foregoing of who we really are as, as Filipinos. Kanabang maibaligya na lang nato yung tanan tanan ba? Di po nato ma blame kay ang we really have a koan kanang difficulties sa uh, cultural education in our educational system kay. Dagkan na kagitunaan ng mga bata niya. Usahay, maglibog na ba? And we, from grass, for example, kita, I think kita here is doing our best and our little ways to really promote and to uh, educate others. Kita tanan din here by the fact that you guys are watching uh, through online. We are all cultural workers. We have to work for our culture. Kay lisod na nga, Karon ang Korean sus ang Korean K-pop kuan kusog kaayo no not that we can't enjoy K-pop we can always enjoy K-pop K-pop is nice uh -oh. but when we watch K-pop we no know... usong usa ko lang K-pop Oh, we know what's up with the mga ikyu gadas as ani magpakita na sila kusog mo kay nang pakita o pagkaon sila Kaya ang oh, mukbang mukbang. So kita po tayo ah, na amantay na ni. Na amantay ka na. Kita na ba? Uwi, uwi. Oo. Oh. Yeah. So dahil salamat Professor Jay for uh, discussing uh, the importance of of, uh, of this, of, of, of knowing our roots. So now we would like to have our the reaction from our audience. So we have with us Today, surprisingly, we are so pleasantly surprised that um, our indigenous tattoo artist is here. So he made the tattoos of, of Ferdinand. And the, you have, there, there was an event yesterday at the USC 
Museum regarding um, indigenous tattoos. So um, we would like to ask uh, Viper's reaction regarding uh, tattoo as a body art. Two sentences, lagot. <laughs> so we have the camera. Uh, are we? Do we have the camera? Hey, pakita din yung tato. Showcase your tato. Sige na. Paano ang jacket? Sige na. Masama na. Mga, you know, only the sick and the, the, the old people who are sick would wear their jackets and their shirts in pre-colonial times. A warrior should be bare-breasted. You should show your tato. Show your tato. May mga hapon. May gabi sa tanan. Um, Professor Jay, it's a pleasure to be here and to listen to you. Um, siguro, when first started, I appreciate how you broke down art because siguro uh, in, in your profession, I'm pretty sure that there's a conflict, especially when traversing art from Western perspective to indigenous. Mura oil o water, and for the longest, sad sa ako, kabahin sa tatu, mura dugay di nag reconcile sad sa ako. Um, but I'm glad you, you spoke of that. Okay? I couldn't have said it any better. Um, in terms of tattooing, grabi kayo ang, yeah, practicality, a lot of it. And um, um, maybe um, a, a familiar sa uh, Dr. Ikin Salvador Amores, who did extensive research sa tattooing sa Luzon. Um, naka mention siya, which I thought was needed to be said and what mo pud ako ang observe sa ako kung um pag explore sa Amoa di as noon sa Mindanao nga tattooing is really not exclusive sa warrior although part siya sa warrior mura na pud siya throughout history sa ako lang kung observation na romanticized siya kay exotic man gud turon ulo tattoo one day ah oh, ana bitaw kayo but tattooing is practice even if you are not uh, a warrior. Um, not like in this lugar, breast has always been, a, even sa Visayas, the breast, sa Luzon, the chest is reserved for tattooing. Um, and a lot of it mirrors spirituality and how they believe in cosmos. And in a way, na siya, um, what do you call this? And then respect the soul na yung gipatay, and it's a mirror of oral tradition. Ah, uh, tinik nana sa mga buntok sa mga igrot how they cut the heads and it grew into a tree and a fern. That's why pag mga pulos sila ulo grew up here. So in in similar sense to her, and same can be said in Mindanao. Um, dili lang yung kayo head hunting kaysa dito sa mga pamat we were um mga suryan sa katigwangan instead of ulo ang ganan puto ng mga arms, ganun ang atay, mga rinana sa inyong mga practices. So, a lot of it, sa ako akong experience, uh, I said is secondary only meaning. Ang tattooing na ilahang ginagusto yun, murag yun kayo, a lot of the symbols sa mga tiil, sa kamot, uh, except lugar sa mga warrior designs, a lot of it is embodiment of the ancestors before them. So, wear it, murag, apelido na imuhang to bring honors to yung mga buwan. So, familiar sa sibiging ni Professor Jay nga, mura siya ang badge sa military. So, maayot ni nga likin ang reconciliation pag ingunin mo sa sugod. And I'm, maybe one of my advocacy being at Mindanao na mura bringing this tradition that is a messiahs who Technically, tapubo ng sa gihapon, but the essence of indigenousness has been replaced by Westernization, throughout colonization. But in um, in hopes na by preserving such culture, by reviving such culture from the wisdom and nagkaroon sa mga tapubo who, who survived colonialism, we're hoping to change the perspective. Kabalo taon sa Western counterpart sa tattoo. But then now we also know what our ancestors perspective on tattooing. And now we look at tattooing more deeper. Hindi it's a design. It's a art. So more of a, let's say, a tattoo practitioner, which is more of a lisod po kayo kung mo reconcile of artists. Sure, pwede man. Pero 
sila manggun, they are limited in not doing certain designs to what they were handed down. Yeah. And for them to keep it, they a state of jurisdiction because they have no perception of that such art. For them, is Monisha because it represents Apo this, because it has to do this. And so that ang imuang tattoo will glow. Uh, and from the northern Mindanao all the way to Kotabato, practice. Same concept, even to Borneo, glow. And it's the concept of the Ganshag mga variation. The whole concept is that tattoos enable for you to be recognized by, by your ancestors. So, in a way, I uh, written tradition stories and like the Europeans, but the symbolism and the body is very steep connecting to that tradition. So nakwe pamanas is an some elders nganung ita wala tay written tradition, nganung na aman dapat sa mga tatu, nganung oral man handed down. And what he responded to, how he responded to me was very, very profound. Because Kung kaning ang tradisyon ang kaning ibot ang tatu, yung i-render sa dead piece of paper, it loses part of its power. It has to be transferred to a living body because our tradition is a living tradition. So, one thing kong rock na, interesting, very, very profound kaya kong outlook sa life. So, I guess that's part of the indigenousness that a lot of the Visayan people has lost and maybe forgotten. But when we see certain tribal motives, la familiar lagi. Although we no longer know, um, a response. So I guess maybe that's also part of our advocacy to to bring awareness that the root of this this patik the symbols are very very ancient. Um, the oldest tool we've discovered that is a Philippines is a bone tool that started it's back almost four thousand five thousand years ago. Ang Castilla has only been there about 500 years ago. That's a small fraction of the amount of years our ancestors practiced that doing. So, in a way, if I can add time in, at umumanig, ito ang kaganin nga. Kaya sa mga kasad, grabe sa tayo, wala nang kayo yung tatuwing sa mga higawang ng talanding. But we're in the process of rediscovering it. And nag-follow me sa mga mga evidences, weaving just the same as sa Kalinga, na sa mga uh, mga pottery, the mga weaving. Also here, ang mga mga artifacts, nga looping and jars, from the word looping, ng mga patikan sa din siya. So, ang ikang, for the longest, ngunit siya ang mga design, very, very similar sa tattoo pattern. Then eventually, nakitandor gide na mga mahal, tattoo gide siya. Um, what's, may siguro, kung mga chime in lang po sa panig, sa amuha lang po experience, na dako kay Baljo ang bali, kay also again, sa wedding, there are certain designs, and color nga, Dito mag magkuan ang couple ni wed because it will empower them in the wedding with the help of the the mana the spirit that goes into the weaving. Um, na ito yung banig magkusay o tribal war. E kung magat kung dito with the certain certain rituals, mas kalma ini puto and mas dalit mas solve ang conflict. Na ay banig masakit on ang tao so that the symbols of the movements of banig will also depict certain practices. And even to burial, I am a certain aspect. And so on. It's, I would probably compare symbolism and, and mga art to language that every ethnic group varies uh, certain art, but more or less it's connected. So, isa dalawa tato is very understandable. So, ga vary lang siya, but it's very different to one, two, two nudos. It's more like, you want to kayo ng concept na tong language. And it goes to the whole aspect of basketball. I will ask the problem of the reading. What do you think? Thanks a lot, Piper. So uh, we thank Piper for sharing with us valuable and precious information and knowledge about the indigenous practices um, that will also reflect our pre-colonial art. Thanks a lot, Piper. So. Research in Cairo, but we are passionate in the topic. 
in just like yesterday when uh, I met a uh, descendant of Sanson, the father of, of course, we know yesterday that the father Sir Osmania is Antonio Sanson, a Chinese history Tito. I was talking with a, a descendant, a priest in uh, Opus Day. I was already discussing the Juan Leo Revolt and also the Chinese history. In Cebu, and also even the Da Vinci Code and the angels and them. I said, I should stop. I should. <laughs> it's very hard to to to, to this, if we disconverse about something we're passionate about. It seems we can't stop. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, we are now because it's the open forum for the, those uh, on site. If you have no question uh, online, I have not seen a new question yet. Uh, so we have our trivia quiz with exciting prize. So, um, pwede na siya nga kanyang the... the... Uy, sayang kayo at kung kano nga, pag barong lang sa mga ginawa, makita mo, kaya i-show sa sila, uh, anak mo sa background, showcase the body. <laughs> so they are showcasing the indigenous art. And, uh, and so for those who would answer the question, the trivia question, the first question. Dire, dito lang gihapon ka ila. So, sa tunga nila. And, so, ask naman the person na mag-answer. So, so, the one who would answer the first question. The first question is for the on-site audience. So, uh, thank you very much to Piper for joining us. And uh, so for this first question, this is for the on-site, the in-person audience. So um, the, the the price for this is our cake and smoothie of the month. Pinibalik tayo ang manga, so ang umangga kalami. So for June, our cake and smoothie and of the month is our mango cheesecake. And uh, so we have this first question. So. Um, the one who would answer, please raise your hand and then go to the microphone to answer. So this is the question. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so this is the, the question. So name, name. So, ano, the busy na ang audience, ang contact audience. Wala, magpapicture na lang kung hindi pa'y per karun. So, picture, picture. Picture sa picture. <laughs> picture. So, um, so we would like to read some more. So, do you have uh, questions from the on online audience? So, for the online audience, uh, you have also a question for you. The second question is for you. Should we have the online audience have the question first? Yeah, I think so. Yes. So, um... So we would change uh, and uh, the first question is now for the online audience. So the first question is this, and then the price is umangga kalani when you come to Cebu and we, you come to Pampras. Because if you are online and you're outside the Cebu, we cannot have, we cannot deliver it to you. <laughs> so the question is this. So the, when you come to Cebu and you come to Pamgras, you get the cake and smoothie of the month, umanga, OMG, umanga, kalami. So name, name the widely used material or metal for jewelry in pre-colonial times in our islands. So yun, actually, this is a very, very easy question. So name, may we show the question? For the online audience, so um, we did a show gap nila. We did a gap nila show ang atong mga models. Yes. So name the widely used uh, material or data for jewelry used uh, in colonial times in our island. So who would want to answer this? Um, the online online audience. Uh, those who are not on site. Me answer. Come okay, the balloon I get to my child and go. So, for dealing me online, I think I know that the second question is for, for you for the on site. The first question is to ask. The first question is, well, that does it. Was there any answer? And, um, oh, they are both correct. 
So the correct answer will show us go go so gold is the most uh, widely uh, most popular so karun na na iron iron so show me the first answer gold Ferdy, Ferdinand Pagao, uh, Ferdy Aparticio, congratulations for giving the correct answer. Toby Wing also got the correct answer, Gold. The first one to give his question, uh, answer is Ferdy Aparticio, congratulations. You get the OMG Kalami. <laughs> oh, Manga Kalami. <laughs> so, so uh, and then the next question is for the on site audience. You will be answering through the microphone, so it's easier. So, so this is the question. The answer is the cocktail of the month. And the cocktail of the month is Mirisi. <laughs> Mirisi is a cocktail. Uh, uh, the, the, the cocktail of the month. So the, the question is this. So it has palira in it. Let me happen in let me menang mamirisi ka. <laughs> so, so the question is this. Let me subscribe on your question. What is the shape of the head? What shape of the head was aesthetically pleasing for the ancient designs? Unsa nga shape sa ulo? So, uh, kisa una ni Nick Grace. Oh, so you go to the microphone. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself and give your question. Uh, give your answer. What shape of oh yes, introduce yourself so that they can take note. If they take note thing you said the ogha. So my answer. What shape of the head is uh nindo uh, nindo for the Visayas, early Visayas, the ancient Visayas. It's called the flat, flattened, flattened and then molded, the slab molding, and then it's elongated at the back. So it seems that you are beautiful. Nindo tanawan guapa. Yeah, congratulations for being a good student, good listener, and taking down notes. Probably believe you a bright and teacher. Bright and professor. That's why the student can answer. Okay, kung di kuno ka answer ang student, it means dili mayo pagkatudlo. Not well, dili may pagkatudlo. No, or, or, no longer the attention span ang student kung wa sa bright and teacher. Or bright good and teacher. Mirisi, ang tamba. Mirisi, kung di sir. Mirisi. So, um, thank you very much for for the... the uh, what's the name of the name? And Judaline Tagoy. And Judaline, our Duki sa atong mga events. Congratulations for uh, for coming on, in person and and being the winner of this trivia question. So our next uh, question, the last but not the least question, and everyone can answer on site and online, and those online and those on site can answer, but you will all answer at the comment section of this Facebook Live event. So or see, I don't know if the Ferdinand and Sulti Ani. So you and, and the, the price is a kawa ba? <laughs> so, uh, is a, did you see your fellow tour guide who, who had a flower bath? Uh, yes. <laughs> you get a flower uh, a kawa bath. You can have also quinoa or quinola. You can have lemongrass and ginger and salt, uh, sea salt. In the, in the kawa, if you don't want flowers, so pinua ka. Lami na kaya Lami na kayo ka after that. So the, the question is this: Name two patterns of the ancient Visayan tattoos. So name any two patterns used in ancient Visayan tattoos. And then ang atong panel of judge, our judge for this would be Professor J. If, if your answer is correct, name two patterns of the ancient Visayan tattoos, and you, the one who would answer the first to answer would get a kawa bath 
a hulong kawa, either a flower bath or a inula, inua bath. So who is the first to answer? So, uh, what is the common pattern? Pwede pa rin makadaog si Ferdinand. Hindi din pwede si Ferdinand makadaog kay Anna ni Sigil. Nagkadaog po. Full of paper na din siya. Hindi pa rin ako sa namo ni Ferdy. Two, 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 two patterns. So, two patterns. Huwag yun ka, duha ka po yung answer. Duha ka answer. So, there is an answer. Actually, correct ni siya. The Professor J from Michelle Angeli. Is Michelle here? Yes. Her, her answer is snakes and lizards. For a game, you know, snakes and ladders. Okay, Rene. Lizard, lizard ni answer. And snake. Tala yung bisaya kita ba? Term, ano? Pero, wala mo na siya na nagsiyas kanina. So, lizard is also a pattern. Lizard, oh, snakes and lizards. I and lizards. Congratulations to Michelle. You get uh, your answer is correct. Uh, Snakes and, uh, snakes and lizards. And then so congratulations to you. Uh, I think no, yung naka answer ha. Michelle Angeli Elip uh, answered correctly for the third question, and she wins a pulong a kawa ba. And um, so we would now like to to uh, to invite our uh, our. Kamarindes this afternoon to give the closing statement while we invite you in, on, on June 17, um, Rizal Love Cebu on June, July 1, I guess. We are planning to, dis to discuss also the lost waterways in Cebu by, with archaeologists, but um, we would uh, we are still finalizing the Ju Ju July 1 event. On July 15, you would discuss music, guitar, the guitar, the history of the guitar, and how our music was replaced by, by European music. So we would now like to have say, Mana Mana and Cafe. So we would now like to have a Professor Jay to give his closing words in our Kapihan this afternoon. I'm very thankful for Abgras to always provide this space for us to gather and to discuss these kinds of things. I thought really nga mahuman na niyong mga pre-colonial o paghuman sa pag-banditi years na It's good. Uh, and then I, then I realized nga we still have a lot to learn and to do, study, research some more. Nindot tayo. I'm very inspired by Pastor Ferdinand, Boxy, ito pa nga ni Piper. And then this group of women doing uh, pre-colonial, uh, reviving pre-colonial clothing. Uh, and they're all over the internet. TikTok sila, Facebook sila. I think we have to bring uh, the, to a new level of engagement uh, and content creation for uh, pre-colonial culture. And I'm very happy that uh, Bamgras has remind us uh, of this very important and pressing uh, concern nga while the centennial activity uh, anniversary, uh, celebrations is over, we should bring its spirit to more people and we should bring what we've learned from it uh, constantly to uh, those who do not know more about, um, about these things. Uh, I, for one, I'm creating modules for my classes and reading list uh, for them to be, uh, for pre-colonial Philippine culture to be part of uh, my classes. Although we have not seen really uh, dedicated courses on, on it, but I think we have to start somewhere and uh, talk more about it. And I hope uh, Siguro Pamgras would create uh, in the future more dedicated annually or an, uh, a celebration of pre-colonial uh, culture or pre-colonial art, no? 
na umaabot ng mga tuig. And I think uh, this would this afternoon not be uh, be as meaningful if not for your presence here uh, personally. Kailahi man nung magsikitag tanaw no sa ano ako wajuk ko nakita din ha. If not for you guys who are here, we feel we feel uh, because cultural work is always a collaborative work. We feel lonely and koan ko kita kita ragyon but seeing faces and everyone here and I hope our audience also I hope you have your own circle of cultural workers that you can share your passion with your your uh, problems and your concerns nindot yun nga magtinabangay ta and I think Pamgras has been very very successful in giving us this platform to see each other gather and do and to recommit always to the important work of cultural preservation. Thank uh, you Professor Jay. Uh, so uh, you have said everything very beautifully. So we, it, it is always a pleasure to have you with us. So thank you so much to our uh, interns uh, for showing us our um, items, uh, the in, items of the indigenous peoples and also of the replica of our pre-colonial uh, jewelry and um, uh, accessories and thank you to our audience for uh, being with us here and be with us once again next month uh, ne next month na no? yes and uh, the, the salamat uh, to our on -site, online audience and also to our um, to those so congratulations to those who, who answered and to those who won the trivia quest and uh, see you again on July 1. Again, salamat to my kapod. I June the I June 17. I'm so sorry. Thank you for reminding me. See you on June 17 with a uh, public historian Xiao Chua who will be here in person and uh, we will be here in person to discuss about how Rizal is connected with Cebu. And also we will have online Professor Rex Hamoy, a descendant of a student of Mr. Rizal in the Pita. And uh, he is also a resource person there in the Pita. He is part of the Pita Historical Society. And uh, he is a resource person regarding what Rizal did in the Pitan. So, so it is an exciting event on June 17 and it is a celebration of the Independence Day, the 125th year of Philippine independence and also Ju June 19 is Rizal's birthday. June 19, 1897 was also the day when the first chapter of the Cebu Katipunan was formed in San Nicolas in Cebu. So that's according to Don Gregorio Abeliana. So dagan salamat po sa ayong hapon. Gabiin na, nagabihan at ang gabi. Mapalitan. 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 Mapalitan.